<laughs> some kind of plan. <laughs> yeah, you, you learn the morning uh, and get a piece of chicken. All right, one last picture. It's been great, eh? It's been tough. It's been really tough. Our last uh, picture is Lebu M. Uh, uh, not Lebu uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> She will explain, but Lebu M, and she's uh, in the jewelry business. She's been part of the family for some time, still showing us so much love. She's with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please can we put our hands together for Lebu M. Let's show some love. Let's show some love. Let's show some love. Let's show some love. All right. Good morning. I'm Lebukhang Musamunyane from Lebu M Jewelry. Lebu M Jewelry was established in 2019. We are a jewelry manufacturing business that specializes in bespoke jewelry, rough diamond evaluations, and watchmaking services. We are based in Jamiston. We also are now suppliers of a jewelry, the Jewelry Village shop in Monte Casino, Four Ways. We started Lebu M Jewelry because um, we know that in South Africa we have a lot of minerals, precious metals to be specific, but then we only retain 5% of those precious metals. So at Lebu M, we hire only beneficiaries of the South Africa's free education system. We manufacture our jewelry using responsibly sourced raw material from Africa only. And we are targeting a luxury niche market. We also do all kinds of jewelry related services. We are Lebu M. <laughs> we need the 50,000 rands funding to, put, to use towards patent trademarking. We have an in-house invented freeform jewelry collection. So basically, I invented a jewelry manufacturing technique, which is the freeform. So there are legal procedures that need to be taken for me to own the rights and patent for that. So we'll use that 50,000 rands for that. For more information about us, you can find us on Google and social media as Lebu M Jewelry. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bespoke jewelry, that's Lebu M. Can we give another round of applause? I'm not being biased. I ought to. It's just a lesson. When you've got a product and you're telling people about the product, it's lovely when people can see what you're telling them about. True or true? So, she came with a jewelry. Now, I'm not saying that the guy who's doing the gardening <laughs> <laughs> now you must come with the machine so we can see and he's dressed he's <laughs> oh, I'm not saying that but it's lovely when you say we've got a product skincare product water whatever it is and then we can see it and feel it ladies and gentlemen those are our pitch finalists our judges will get together they will decide who the winner is, walking away with the grand prize of 50,000. Can we give them another round of applause? Massive round of applause. Not easy. It's not easy. Come on, let's show them some love. Let's show them some love. All right. Thank you so much. We are going to give away this prize right at the end. Our theme is managing and growing your finances. And next up, we've got Mr. Tapelo, a senior manager, who will be speaking on financial wellness and implementation at NetBank. So please listen up. Um, Mr. Tapelo, yeah? You're, you're with us. Before you come on stage, we forgot to give away, <laughs> give away, um, Tapelo, Tapelo 1. Because there's another tapelo. So, ahead of marketing, 
Tlamama, uh, please come to the front, my brother. We've got a gift for you. All right, so what we have here is um, kicks. Let's just, because sometimes I don't know what I believe or what I didn't talk about my heart. Or what I'm talking about my heart. But all bonds are here as All right, so we've got kicks. Kicks is a, uh, it's a shoe brand shoe. Uh, it's by a friend of ours, family of tea, Semi. Let's, okay. Oh my word. Fantastic. So this is the brand um, T, T Kicks. Thank you so much to Sammy. Uh, we've also got the Kicks uh, Club Clubs as well. How so Kuala Lady, this only lady to can have the Kicks. And uh, yes, we've got more men. We've got a book, The 14 Year Startup uh, by Mr. Tepo. An amazing book. You want to get yourself this book. Amazing, amazing. He's with us in the building to come and share his success story. Right here from Deverton, and then there's so many goodies as well from uh, uh, Okay, and more from NetBank, and more goodies. Proudly I say as well, thank you so much to all our partners, you've made this possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. Can we, can we just, okay, fantastic. Can we get a picture? No, no, only one. Na bamfa, Emma Street. That's uh, that's for you. One more time, a round of applause to our partners, and a big thank you as well to Tapelo. We well, appreciate you, my brother. All right, let's get moving. Tapelo Two, Senior Manager, Financial Wellness and Implementation, NetBank. Tapelo, you here? We like guy. He's coming. Remember, if you are using social media, please send Gela hashtag join us for tea. Hashtag together beke libeke. Are we having a good time? Yes. So far, so good? Yes. All right, fantastic. It's about you. Tapelo, you ready? All right, let's show some love, ladies and gentlemen. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Tapelo, financial wellness and implementation at NetBank. Come on, let's show some love. Let's show some love. Let's show some love. Love, love the energy. So, over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good day, everyone. Are you all having a good time? Yes. Good, good. Uh, so, I'm Tapelo, and I'm from NetBank, uh, from a division called Financial Wellness. And uh, it is a pleasure to be here. It is quite inspirational, I must be honest. And uh, I hope that you are finding and getting some nice nuggets from here. And uh, I was just sitting there and I was reminded by uh, John Maxwell's words to say, success is a journey. And uh, Jim Rohn then puts it and says, success are the daily disciplines, right? And then he also asks to say, how do you uh, attract success? So you attract success by being an attractive person, right? And that is why there were pitches that were done here, you know, to be able to position your business, to uh, actually explain what is your, the nature of your business, what problem you are solving, and also if there is money in the problem. That's the part I like the most. So anyway, at NetBank, we are a bank that uh, believes strongly in relationships. Uh, uh, we have got fellow bankers outside, our fellow colleagues, and uh, when you go to the bank, it's no longer a point of going there and then you open an account, or you get uh, the banker order the card for you, or print a statement for you. That's not what the bankers are there for. They are there to build a relationship with you. So the next time you go to the bank, uh, have a pitching deck, explain what your business is all about, right? Explain what the vision of your business is all about so that we better understand uh, what kind of or how we can build a journey with you. So it's very, very important to do so. So um, there are so many services that we provide uh, in terms of uh, supporting the small business uh, or the township economy and also small businesses in general. 
as I've had a lot of questions to say, so here I am, I'm just starting out, uh, so what, can, what is the, the, the best product for me that I can get? So uh, if you haven't had, we have what we call a startup bundle. Uh, it's a business account for somebody who wants to start from scratch. And the good thing about it is that you don't have to pay monthly fees for so the next six months or so and you'll be able to use it, you'll be able to transact on it, you'll be able to transact also electronically. So I'm already putting the best foot forward there uh, to pitch for, for our own organization. But then the next part is that, um, the, also the question that I also get is then, here you are, you are a business, most of your clients come to you, they have got no cash, they have a card. So what do you do? So you will also get to hear after maybe the session or during the networking session, I encourage you to go to our stand there to meet our fellow colleagues who will explain to you that we also have a pocket pause. Uh, it is a tiny device like this that you can be able to put in your pocket when you go out to see your clients. If somebody wants to, ah, there we go. So here it is. And uh, if you want to know more about it, please go to the, to the to the stand outside. And also the, the, the nice thing about it, and something that uh, COVID told, uh, taught us is that uh, we now, uh, you are now able to just tap on it. So it does have a tapping facility. So please, if you want to know more about it, uh, go for it and actually find out about it. I also just want to share uh, about uh, the division that uh, I manage. So as part of our contribution to the township economy, we realize that it's very important to have a hand-holding or a supporting structure for people that want to start businesses. So our focus is to curate, to develop, to uh, have a lot of uh, business literacy programs. So we, we offer a lot of those. So if you belong to an organization that empowers small businesses, or you are actually, uh, you've set up an organization that uh, supports other small businesses, do hit us up, uh, we'll be able to come there and provide our business literacy programs for you for free. So if you want to know more about that part in particular, you can send us an email on uh, financialwellness at netbank.co.za and we'll be happy to come out wherever you are across the country. We are happy to go there and run the programs for you. So I know that time is an important factor, so I just want to leave you with five very important components now that it is, uh, it is, it is uh, we, are, we are wrapping up savings month. There's a lot of interviews we've done over the month, uh, but they were more focusing on uh, individual saving. And uh, I would like to share five components, and I saw some people have got some notes there, and it would be great if you take them. Very basic, and those existing businesses, it would be a very wonderful refresher for you. And for people that are considering to start a business, these are the things that maybe you want to consider very early on. The very first component, it is with regard to the income sources in your business, right? So your business, maybe you're selling muffins, and in you selling muffins, you get your money, fine. So that is the one source of income. But you need to find out, this business of mine, what other income sources can I get out of it? And study each market. Then in, in that way, you are capitalizing on your business. That's very, very important. Maybe you are selling the muffins, fine, that's your gig. The other part could be maybe you are training other people on how to make the best muffins. That's another income stream, and you can then be able to develop on it, find out how to go about that. So that's quite important to, to, to share that. The second step I'd like to share is to determine your fixed costs in your business. That's very important. And the good thing about fixed costs, it's quite straightforward. You are having a Wi-Fi premium that you are paying per month for your business, easy you can be able to factor that for the rest of the year for whatever that it is that you wanna plan. The third component uh, is to determine your variable costs. Variable costs are those ones that go up, down electricity, maybe sometimes depends on usage. So that's where it really gets tricky there to say, how do you then cater for an expense which is variable, you know? 
So the trick that we would like to recommend to you is that those months where you are making more money, where you've got more clients, that is where you can use those extra profits to pay more on your, to cater for your variable costs. For instance, electricity, if you've made more profit this year, maybe pay more money on electricity so that when the maybe months or maybe when business is down or business is slow, then you have got something to, to play with there. So that's, that's something that I can recommend. And then the fourth uh, step uh, is the determination or determining the, the, the one-time spends. So as you run your business, here you may want to buy a laptop, you may want to buy a printer, you may want to buy those office equipment for your business, maybe you want to buy a bike. So very important to also learn to plan those. And, and um, so my mother, when she, when she went on pension, she wanted to make those hats for church. And if you are a, a tall person like myself and you sit at the back and there are all those hats, you cannot see the pastor at all. So we try to stay in the front. But now what happens is that my mother has to make three choices. Does she buy the heavy duty machinery? Does she rent it from somebody and make those, uh, 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 those hats and then returns the machinery, or does she go to the bank to apply for finance? So those are very important questions, especially, and, and, and capital expenditure is one of the most important drivers of cash flow. You need to be able to understand uh, whether the decisions you are making, are they making you bleed cash flow in your business, or are they bringing in the cash flow? Very, very important. And then the fifth point I'd like to uh, leave with you is uh, to bring everything all together. So when you do so, now you have a full picture of your business budgeting on a monthly basis. Now you are able to decide what is it that I'm going to cut, what is it that I'm going to uh, make sure that I spend uh, as less as I can uh, with regard to the overheads that are not necessary in my business. So uh, those are the things I just wanted to leave with you. And then I know also some people are asking, okay, so what is NetBank doing for small businesses? I'd like to, number one, encourage you to visit uh, simplybiz.co.za. It is a website, it's powered by NetBank. Uh, I normally call it uh, the Twitter for small businesses. You can find anything there. You network with small businesses. There's a lot of information there. Some people have got problems with how to uh, price their there are goods. Some people have got certain problems with maybe uh, some technical concepts to understand in business. I encourage you to just go and, and visit the website there. And also, as a bank, we are aware that we may not be able to provide solutions, especially lending solutions for all businesses. Some businesses would require some sort of slow support. Uh, over time to help them to get wherever they want to be. So we have listed there some alternative financiers like your venture capitalists, uh, uh, seed investors there. So there are other alternative funding opportunities that we have listed there on the Simply Biz website. So we encourage you to please go and, and just play around uh, on the website there. Some other things that we've done as a bank to try to support small businesses, I think you can recall some time last year where there was unrest in KZN and, and Gauteng, and then that's where the initiative of the Together Beke Beke uh, was born, and that has been quite a success, and now we are really deliberating as to how to do a continuation of, of that, maybe finding out how those families and those businesses that we supported and gave grants to, as part of the uh, to Together Bank and the Baker Initiative, how they are doing. So that's really something that is very high on our agenda uh, in terms of in terms of that. So, but with those, uh, I'd like to say um, I wish you all the best. If you are maybe on your journey to start a business, and uh, maybe you've got a, a nine to five job, and you are trying to juggle, or you've got a family, it's really about uh, eventually making a decision to just start. And then for those ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much. That was uh, Mr. Tapelo, Senior Manager, Financial Wellness and Implementation at NetBank. So thank you so much. Um, thank you for all that you're doing for the 
entrepreneurs in the room and all the small businesses. We see your work and we appreciate it. Please, could you come to the front? Tapelo <laughs> 2. Can she come to the front? Can we just get a picture of uh, you? Can we just get a picture of Tapelo? This is a bit awkward. He's like, he's looking, you can see camera. Uh, wow, the photo has been taken, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we've got a gift. I don't go. Don't relax. We, we've got you. All right, once again, it's the same gift that Tapelo One got. And we want to say a big thank you to NetBank, who is supporting a uh, entrepreneur, um, Kicks Semi, also for a black, young black entrepreneur who's got his own Kicks Semi, a young, powerful entrepreneur from Tembisa. Uh, NetBank, thank you so much for making it possible and for supporting him. He's starting out, but you'll see cakes growing. So a big, big thank you to NetBank. Can we give uh, NetBank a round of applause? So, do you have enough? You don't? Sorry? Nashe oh, Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tapelo. Another announcement. Yo, you know, today feels like like the Oprah show. You know when Oprah is generous and they're just, she's just giving. Just giving. So, NetBank once again has made it possible that all our exhibitors who are exhibiting today, because of NetBank, we are going to get a product from each and every single exhibitor. We are going to buy. NetBank has made it possible that we get products from each and every single exhibitor. Thank you, NetBank. Thank you so much. HA. <laughs> thank you so much. A big, big thank you. Next up, we have a, a brother, family member as well from uh, Proudly SA. He's the assistant PR manager, Tiamo. Please, can you come to the front, my brother? Can we give Tiamo a round of applause? Come on, let's show some love to Tiamo from uh, Proudly SA. Brother, good to see you. Over to you. Dumelang, good. Is it morning still? Good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, I'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for coming out today. Um, it's not the best of weathers, uh, but you guys decided to take it upon yourselves that today you will invest in yourselves. Um, I think Bulelani said this um, earlier this morning, Jorge, you guys are going to receive a lot of information today. You're going to make a lot of connections today. Um, there's this saying, you can, take a, you can take a horse to the river, but you can't make it drink. Right? You came to the river yourselves, and it's up to you to drink that information. All the information that you're getting today, write it down, think about it, dwell on it tonight. So that come Monday, you start and make connections with people. So that come Monday, you enter those people. You connect them. You think, well, okay, how can Tiamo help me? I might not have that answer today, but I will have it on Monday. So please write down things. Make connections. Talk to people you don't know during the break. Um, and also thank you to Mr. Balabala. Mr. Get Things Done. Thank you so much, man, for not letting the dream die. Believing in township entrepreneurs. A big round of applause to Mr. Balabala. Thank you so much. Um, my comrade used the wrong slide. I was not supposed to be there. I don't know, but it's okay. My name is Tiamo, as I said. Let's go to the next slide. I am responsible for communications and public relations at Proudly South African Now. What Proudly SA is, it's the country's bi-local movement, official bi-local campaign. And what we do is that we promote um, and lobby for locally made products and services uh, within the country to different target markets. What those target markets are, are, it's the public sector, it's the private sector as well as consumers and we do it in various ways and I hope this presentation will sort of give you a better understanding of what it is that we do. Um, let's go to the next slide please. All right, so like I said, yeah, we're, we, we were formed in 2001 um, as a result of the job summit that was held uh, in the 1990s, I think 1998, by the then president um, Nelson Mandela. And we were born in 2001, so this year we are turning 21. 
Next slide. The Proudly SA focus areas, like I mentioned earlier, we focus on different um, sectors. The first one is the public sector, the private sector, as well as the public, and we also try and make sure that it is easy to find locally made products um, and locally made services. Those are our focus areas and why we exist. Um, when it comes to the public sector, when they go out, this is government, municipalities, etc. There is a list of designated items that, uh, and it is legislated, it is law, that when they go out to tender for a list of these, anything that is on the list of um, those designated items from things like clothing, anything in the CTF, CTFL um, sector, clothing, textiles, uh, footwear, and leather, they need to buy local. It is a legislation out to tender when they put things out on the newspapers and they say we want to buy linen for the hospitals we want to buy clothing for uh, the people who are in our correctional services they need to make sure that they support local so that is it's already there it is already gazetted it is already law so what we do um and I'll talk to it in the next slide is we um and this was pre-covid but we do it now um in webinars as well is that we go to provinces and we remind people who are uh, uh, the people who procure, the procurement um, officials of this legislation uh, in what we call public procurement, um, um, public procurement events. We also um, lobby private sectors like Mr. Tapelo and try and encourage them to, uh, whenever it is that they need to buy furniture, when they need to buy any services that they need for, whether it is an event or anything that is happening, that they support you guys, that they support local. Next slide, please. What's the importance of localization? Um, now, many countries have a buy local movement, and at Proudly South Africa, that if you increase the demand for local, it means you're increasing the demand for jobs. It is that simple. You increase the demand for local, increasing the demand for jobs. Now, we're living in an economy, unfortunately, where there are so many people who are unemployed. We all know someone who is unemployed. Am I right? We all know someone who is unemployed, and what it is, what is incumbent upon you and me as consumers, because we all buy something, is that when we make a decision to go buy um, toothpaste, or we go buy that shoe, or we go buy that suit, we don't care what is written on the made in uh, the country of origin lab uh, label, which every product is supposed to have. Then we don't care who we are supporting. Because when we buy things that are made in, in France and made in China, what we're essentially doing is we're creating jobs in that country. What we're essentially doing is we are contributing to the unemployment. We are contributing to the, to the we know that are unemployed, it's because of us. So we need to also, you and I, change our mindsets, change our pro buying behaviors every time we go and buy something. Whether it's something small, and I really implore you from today, even if it's one that you change in your buying habits when you go and do your groceries. Um, whether it is a toothpaste, whether it is uh, clothing, just make sure that you buy something that is South African because you know that you're contributing to job creation within South Africa. Um, next slide, please. All right, so you guys are very important. Entrepreneurs are very important in, in, in any economy, in fact. Um, there are studies that show that um, at least 90% of enterprises in any economy are SMMEs. We are all about buying local to create jobs. So it is in supporting entrepreneurs and supporting SMMEs that you can create that demand uh, for local jobs. Um, that's that. It says 90% of enterprises in all economies constitute a majority of the country's employment virtually worldwide. The next bullet point says SMEs are the main source of jobs in the business sector across the world. So it is really important for um, all of us, all sectors, to support SMMEs, even the private sector, because if you are in whatever business that you are in in the private sector and you don't support SMMEs, who are you going to sell to? Who is going to have the money to buy your product? They will not have money if you do not support them. Next slide, please. All right, I how we deal with uh, the, uh, the private sector in terms of the public sector procurement forums. There's a few forums that we do in each province. We do webinars as well. I'm um, at the advent of the, you know, the COVID-19 
we started investing a lot in, in, in that arm of our communication. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. These are some of the sectors that we uh, say, uh, say specific engagements that we, we deal with. We have a membership, we have a membership uh, base of over 2,000 uh, proudly South African member companies. And we always make sure that we make webinars and each of these, um, each of these members have access to events such as these public, such as these sector specific engagements that can happen in the form of webinars that are free um, to access of the public. So when you go onto our website, when you go to onto the YouTube page, when you want to learn about any of these sectors, then you can find that information. Next slide, please. One of the reasons um, I would like to employ SMMEs and entrepreneurs to join the bi-local movement, to join Proudly South African, is that we always find innovative ways to get access to different kinds of markets. Um, it's, it's all good and well to have a product, to have an idea, to have a service, but you need a market to sell it to. And it's not always easy, especially when you're starting out, because when you start out um, a small business, you are the everything of your, of your company. You are the CEO, you're the salesperson, you are the accountant, you're the CFO. Where must you find time? And at Proudly South African, we try and make it easier for you to access some of these um, you know, financial and financial opportunities. We bring the people together in different rooms where we can give you these opportunities or give you this information for you to get back home, to dwell over it, and then to make action on it. Um, this talks to you know the social media as we have around 200,000 followers on social media. And when you join the bi-local movement, what we do often is we promote and we profile your organization and it goes out to all of um, our followers we also have a newsletter that goes out to the 2000 so it's a b2b platform that you can take advantage of so whenever there is an achievement an award um, whenever there is a special or a sale that you're having then there is that option as well for you to say hey tiamo um, can you put me in the next monthly newsletter so that i can get access uh, to those other businesses who could be my clients next slide please just spoke about the newsletter all right, um, one of the things we did, um, uh, and we started about a year or so ago, is that we made the decision to expose young people to different uh, sectors and the jobs value chain that lies within that sector. Um, it's a good thing to learn about certain sectors and certain jobs, but sometimes you don't get to see, um, go to the next slide, to see what happens um, in these jobs. So we take students, we take media, because we also need the media to take that information out there, for the media to understand, Jorge, when you buy something that is local, this is the jobs you know, that you are supporting. I mean, the gentleman from DKNY Lounge mentioned that um, he's supporting 54, he employs 54 people, that's 54 households. Let's remember that. There's also a multiplier effect. There is what we all know as black tax as well. You know, when we get that SMS that please call me that says, hi, how are you? You know what it really means, you know? So it doesn't mean hi. So we, we take media and we take students and we get them, to, we expose them to what goes on um, in these different sectors. We've taken them to uh, the CTFL sector, David Lalle Studios, OBC, CTFL. Brew. We've taken them to Nissan. We've taken them to um, to different to different factories and different organizations, so they get an appreciation of what happens when you put your rand in that organization. Please, delicious festival um, is coming up next. So, um, what we have done in the past, we have, like I said, members in different uh, industries. We have taken our members to what we call the Proudly SA Village at the Delicious Festival. The Delicious Festival is a Proudly SA organization, member organization, and we have an agreement with them that each year we take those people in those sectors so that they can access that market. The 20,000 uh, festival goers that, get, that go to the Delicious Festival every year, um, they are exposed to that. They sell out. And only because they are members of Proudly South African. So this is one of you know, the, the many different sector-specific, I mean, this is a lifestyle event, uh, sector-specific events that you will be exposed to when you join the bi-local movement. Next slide, please. Okay, that's pictures from the Delicious Fest. Um, Expo 2020 Dubai, which did not really happen in 2020 because of COVID-19. We also were partners with Brand South Africa. We took 
um, about 15, if I remember, member or companies to Dubai for them to display their products in Dubai. Um, it's also it also speaks to that access to market a function that I said we yeah, we can do. We took them there, and I think it was for from October until March this year. Uh, and many of them manage to sell to different international and have deals with different international markets as well. Next slide. Local fashion police. Um, this is in the city. Some of these sectors that um, we focus on really are um, because of the master plans the Department of Trade, Industry and, and, and Competition is for, is, is, has put together. It is because, it is because they are labor intensive. Uh, sectors. Um, with the research that the DTIC has done, they saw that some of these sectors, furniture, uh, CTFL sectors, are very intensive and they have uh, a, a big job creation. Uh, local fashion police is something that we started um, last week. It is a consumer, a consumer competition. And what we asked them to do is that we asked them to take a picture of themselves and post it up on the social media and as well as where they bought it. Something of um, something that is made locally, clothing that is made locally, something stylish. Went to each each of these uh, uh, outlets: Plus Fab, David House, Cooper, also members of South African, and they were the judges of this competition. And each of those winners, um, end of that competition, which was one month long, all got ten thousand rands worth of worth of local fashion. So that is another way that we're trying to get in, we're trying to get consumers to change their buying habits, for them to buy more local. Next slide, please. All right, um, this was not supposed to be here, but I'm in PR, and um, we, we go out of our way to make sure that you know, we give you opportunities um, with, within the media space. We have media partnerships various communities within the country. So if you are in the Western, for example, we've got partnerships with a community radio station there. Um, and every Wednesday, they, they profile one organization. Um, try and grow that. It's still starting out, but to try and grow that more and more. We did a partnership with Kaya FM uh, recently for our local wine expo, where we profiled um, South African winemakers as well. Please. All right, I want to talk about Proudly SA membership. I've been talking about Proudly SA membership, but um, the next slide will tell you how it is or what it is that we look at before you can become a member. Um, these are the four criteria of becoming a Proudly SA member. The first one is local content. What it means is that whatever it is that you're making, whatever service it is that you're providing, at least 50% of the cost of production must be incurred in South Africa. So it's called putting the money where your mouth is. You cannot call yourself proudly South African when you are buying your raw material from another You need to also invest within South Africa. So that's the one thing we look at. The next thing that we look at is quality. Um, we look at your, um, each industry has a quality certification or quality assurance bodies. There's also things the SABS, et cetera, and ISOs um, that accredit and give you quality certification. We want to make sure you put the Proudly SA logo on your product, that the consumers there can uh, be rest assured that this is a quality product. It's not going to make me sick. It's not me going to take me to hospital. And then we also uh, look at your labor bonuses and your environmental standards to make sure that you know you are complying with South Africa's labor practices, um, that you're not doing um, anything harmful to the environment as well. That's what we look at as well. Um, and then in terms of how much it costs, people think that uh, expensive. Uh, it's not really, next slide, it's not um, expensive. It is, it starts at 500 rand. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you make less than 5 million rand turnover, um, all you pay is 500 rand a year. So it's an annual fee, um, paid monthly, you pay it once a year. And it's, that 500 rand is really an investment, you know, in yourself, in your, in your business, in your company. An investment in profiling yourself to other organizations, to other individuals. Um, and then SMMEs that make between 5 million and 10 million, um, their annual fee will be 1,000 Rand and in the different, um, the different tiers of membership. I wanted to play a video. Um, I'm not sure if the sound is connected. Is it connected? No, it's not connected. Um, I, I think I can make it. Can it play? Just go to the video, please. 
um, and hover over it and just click on it. No. <laughs> it doesn't say thank you. <laughs> But anyway, thank you so much, guys. Uh, my colleagues, Lesejo and Welby, will be there at the stand if you want to learn more about Proudly SA. I'll also be around if you have any more questions to ask me. Thank you so much once again, Busiso. Thank you um, to the T team. Thank you, NetBank, as well. Thank you to all the partners um, for making this happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, can we give Tiamo another round of applause? Please come to the front, my brother. Yeah. No, you don't look at me. Look there. All right. There's a, we've got, sorry, another long, um without this, yeah. Thank you so much. Can we give Tiamo a round of applause? Thank you. Here's your gift, my brother. Ah. By show of hands, how many of you love um, a cappuccino? Not you would like. <laughs> There's a difference, because I see hands are going, are we poos, maro, o yai khalel? How many of you like a cappuccino or drink a cappuccino? Some of you, this is what you wake up to, right? When you wake up, a bit of caffeine, just to get your day going. Guys, I'm having one. It's amazing. No, not good. I'm just saying, please order one. Order one. Let's support. You'll love it. It's amazing. Uh, where? The waiters? I will speak to the waiters. There's a lady who brought us a cup. This is amazing. This is really good. So please support and get yourself one. On you. All right. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. We have... Um, to be honest, you know, before I bring on our next speaker... I'll bring on our next speaker very quickly. I had this challenge, and many of the entrepreneurs had this challenge. You know when it's different, like when, when you're running, I think one of our speakers mentioned it. I think it was you, or, or Tiamo, where you start a business, and you're the only one, and you're doing marketing, and you're doing sales, and you're doing accounts, then there's money. But it's different. It, I had this mentality that I'm working, I'm making the money, my money. So, hey, I dictate how I use that money. But never taught about business money and spoo money. Because spoo works for the business. Then I end the business. I'm on by a one of the And one of the big, I think it's so crucial that, that we speak about money. I learned is when you then go and apply for funding or you want to take your business to the next level, one of the things that they ask for, and we don't know, but they say, can we see your accounts, your financials? celebrate. It's the business account. It's swiping, it's swiping. And these are the things that sometimes the way of us taking our business to the next level. So we need to learn how to manage and how to grow our money. And our next speaker is going to speak on that. Sema Luleka, the founder of uh, the Innovation Hub, speaking on how to grow and manage your money. You want to listen. Already pens are out. Like, I got a kulumi, but in your one, I got your We need to get some nuggets and knowledge and information. Sir, the stage is yours. Please can we give a round of applause. Luleka, the founder of the Innovation Hub. Come on, let's show him some love. Let's show him some love. Let's show him some love. Sir, over to you. Sanbonan, Dumelang, Abshin. Sanbonan, Dumelang, Abshin. Can we all stand up? Thank you, thank you, thank you. High five. Can we all sit down?
Sanbonan? Jumela? Abshe. All we You know, you, you know what I love about being in control. People do what you tell them to do. That's power. Guys, everyone can be in business, but the greatest part, the greatest part about being in business is to mind your own business. How many of you agree with me? Because if you don't mind your own business in business, trust me, you're going nowhere in business. All right? So I'm here to touch on a very, very crucial role or a very crucial factor of business, financial management in business. And looking at you guys here, I see people with... Whew, I'm scared. Bad financial management in business. Right? How many of you here can raise your head and say, I'm mastering the financial management of my business? How many of you? <laughs> Don't be scared. <laughs> Decide. Yeah, we have to, eh? How many of you can say, I'm mastering the financial management of my business here? Hmm. None. Oh, one. Please stand up. Please stand up. Please come join one stage and get your two minutes fame. <laughs> two seconds, five seconds, one minute. Yes. Which one do you need? Which one currently? Which one do you need? Listen. Two seconds. Five seconds, one minute. I need five seconds. Five seconds. Yes. Tell us how to do it. In five seconds. No, no, I actually need a minute. <laughs> I need a minute, actually. A minute. Yes, I'm yes. giving you a minute. Right. Shine. Okay. Um, I'm very vocal, so I don't need a mic. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, greetings to you all. Oh. Yeah. Oh, by the way, my name is Fedomin Sajayo. Um, I own a company named PSK Liqua Insurance. Actually, the company insures Uchwala. I know nobody knows the company, but it insures Uchwala, spe specifically for taverns locally. So when it comes to finance, um, you know, I have to make profit, and there has to be profits for business. I don't know if I'm making sense. <laughs> there has to be profits for me and profits for a business. You understand? Pella, I do the hard work. I, I run everything in the business. So obviously, in the business, I only take 10% of the amounts that's put in every month, which means as Bafarama, 10,000 every single month, I only take 2,000 from that amount. So obviously, if I know you're not going to tell this money, this money is for business, but not for you. You have to check your books almost every single three hour of the day. Mm -hmm. The third hour of the day when you get it. Stand, stand, stand here. How many of, of you agree with her? One. Let me tell you some, something. Uh, uh, I'm very much open because we are here to learn. I don't hold anything. With my lady has a very, very great business module, but the financial management of it is so, it's so bad. I like that, but many, many people are comfortable in trying instead of doing the right thing. I don't deal well with people who always try. I don't deal well with people who always say, go so long, until when? You need to do it right now. Look, that's not how you do business financially. I need you to listen. Every time money comes in your business, you're taking something. Today, you, uh, it pays, this lady pays you 10,000, you're taking 2,000. Tomorrow, she pays you 5,000, you're taking 1,000. Tomorrow, he pays you 100 rand, you're taking 50 rand. Then, 
How do you pay yourself? How do you manage that? When are you paying yourself? Why don't you have a fixed salary for yourself? Instead of you chowing money every day, can you account for that? Why are you taking money today? Why are you taking 2,000 today? Why are you taking 100 rand tomorrow? Why are you taking 50 rand next week? What are you doing with that money? It doesn't make sense. Straightforward. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Malekese. I'm an accredited investment practitioner. South Africa's uh, a multi-award winning business coach. And lastly but not least, business rescue and analyst. Uh, I'm the founder of the Incubation Hub. I will tell you on how to manage your business finances. This was just a study case. Uh, I'll already Yes, I didn't want to say it, you said it. We have a study case here, yeah, what I was trying to do, of what I was trying to achieve with you two guys, because all of us here, no, not me including <laughs> Okay, all of us, we started like here, hey, but through learning, attending seminars, through investing on financial management literacy, we're getting it right. Uh, be, if I don't forget, I will tell you how did I reach to manage five companies uh, within a space of two years. It's through business reinvestment because most people take that light. Business reinvestment is very much key when you're in business. Thank you. Time. Have a seat. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, business money is not your money. Two different things. There's business profit. There's a salary. And all of you here, all of you here, I don't care who says what, all of you here are not at the stage where you should be paying yourself. All of you here. But you are at the stage where you should be reinvesting in your business. Am I making sense? All of you here are not at the stage where you should be paying yourself, where you should be celebrating. There's nothing to celebrate at your stage, at your level. Someone on this side. <laughs> you're not ready. You're not at that level. Look, I have five companies. Oh, another thing. The first time I touched a million was from NetBank. <laughs> yeah. 2018 business coach of, of the year, I got it from NetBank. Yeah. They're giving out money. So, guys, I'll tell you why I have five companies and I don't drink alcohol. I don't go out. I'm antisocial. I cannot afford alcohol. I'm too broke for alcohol. Because most people, when you say celebration, they're thinking alcohol. Most people, we sing, when, when we speak about celebration, they're thinking of partying. When we say celebration, they're thinking of lunch. And most of you are using business finance to fund it. Yeah. <laughs> As if you're going to do the right thing when you live here. Look, we are wired to make to spend money. Jesus. Let me re repeat that. Because uh, you didn't hear me or you just ignored that. Do not give me a round of applause. <laughs> we are stereotyped to make money, to spend money not reinvest in our businesses. You've been in business for four years and you set in your business. It's bad. Ma'am, I have a present for you. You've been in business for four years and yet you don't have any asset in your business. And when I talk asset, they're looking at me and say, oof, how do I manage to buy a truck? How do I manage Look, asset is a simple, simple thing. That phone is an asset. Register it under your business. Instead of that red jacket, buy your uniform. <laughs> Most of us are presentable on what we are wearing, but our business finances are not presentable. Just like her. Yeah. <laughs> we 
so presentable, we so comfortable in eating out, in spending our business money, but we're not comfortable in reinvesting in our businesses. Yet we expect so. <sighs> Don't be scared. That's reality. Most of you are starting business and be claiming, you know, I want to employ 10 people, I want to employ 30 people, I want to employ 40 people. You are not at the stage to be employing people. You are in a stage of building. How many of you here can raise their hands and say, I've been in business for four years? Let's see. Yes, sir? Two, three. Three people here. Four years. Oh. High five, Choma. <laughs> Two years? Two years? Focus, guys. Listen. One year? Okay. Three years. Okay. You already counted. Don't raise your hand. I know three years. Three years? Six months? What's business funding? Who understands the term business funding? You are in business, right? You understand what business funding is? Most of you cannot differentiate between business funding, startup capital, operational grant. Business for two years already you are starting to apply for funding. You're not ready for funding. It's financial literacy. It's business investment. Take notes. Don't be scared, but learn. It's business funding, startup capital, and operational cost. Most of you here, all you need is startup capital. Not all of you, I said most. Most of you. That's all you need. You need startup capital. And you need to use your startup capital to build your clientele, to build your database, to build your business profile. Because here again, most of you cannot differentiate the difference between business profile and a business plan. They think it's one thing. No, it's not one, one thing. Two different things. You start with a business profile, to build a business plan. Business profile is you and your services and where you, you are based. Business plan, Jesus. Don't have time to waste, my man. I'm moving. I'm moving. Do you want me to repeat? <laughs> you need to book me for that. You need to book me for that. Guys, let's not get too comfortable in spending instead of investing. Because most of us as young black people, we don't have investment. We don't have assets. Camera, camera lady, are you scared? Don't be. We're not on scared tactics here. Most of us here, I said most, not all of us, because I'm excluding myself. We don't have assets, but we are in business. Even a simple, simple t-shirt. How many of you are rocking your uniform here? Let's see. <laughs> Thank you, sir. How many of us are rocking our uniform here? Let's see. Can you shout your business name, sir? Live for me. Yes, brother. Ah, come on now. Don't spoil the moment. Most delicious. Most delicious food. Yes, sir. Pardon? K apparels. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Levels apparel. Ooh. Yes, sir. Sunday cookout. I love food, though. Please invite me next time. Yes, ma'am. Now, when, when I already gave you a spotlight, man. Wow. Guys, your, your uniform is an asset. Because when you come to net, 
and can apply for that business funding. He's here. The reason why we go through your business uh, uh, thing, funding application and the reason why we're giving you money is not because you have a unique business, not because you've been in business for 100 million years. It's because we are funding assets. We don't fund your business operations. We're funding the asset that you have in the business. So if you don't have a simple thing like a t-shirt, like a laptop, like a phone, how do we take yourself serious? Guys, are you with me? <sighs> if you can, actually you can afford it, but you are too ignorant to open your mind to think, or no, I'm investing in my business. When I buy a t-shirt, when I print a t-shirt, when I do business card, I don't like business cards, though. I will tell you why. Uh, when I buy a pen, when, when I buy that when I buy a printer, when I buy a projector, I'm investing in business for growth. Most of us are too lazy to think about that. Because why? We're too comfortable in laziness. Jesus Christ. Yes, as I said it, we're too comfortable in laziness. San Bonan, San Bonan, give these two ladies a round of applause. I want Mama be it. Uh, come on, guys. Can we stand up? Can, can we stand up, please? Can we give them a round of applause? Come on, guys. You can do better, eh? You can do better. Whew. Sanwana and Banda. Ninja. Ah, Bantuinkos. Bantuinkos. Ma'am, what is your business? Oh, we menu. Okay. We manufacture a school uniform for the kids. Mm. Both of you? Yeah, both of us. Where are you based? We are, we, we are from Wadville, no. but our business is at Apex. A Apex. Apex, Apex, the company there. Thank you. <sighs> To how much is that going up a uniform? Now you plug it. Now you plug. I get this call. I see I see a but I was got thing uniform. Huh? We say stereo. We we say pay. We gonna learn new grand. I get. So now you plug. Welcome, welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. Even even at school, they are always late comers. Yeah. Salaban yon yon, but I'm on my side. Guys, look, we need to buy assets in our businesses. Because when you go to NetBank and apply for business funding, when you go to government and apply for your grant, when you go to government and apply for a startup capital, they need to see the asset that you have and how much have you invested in your company. Because if we're not, where's my lady? If we're now in Mali and Gena, we are keeper and I'm tired. In Mali and Gena, we are keeper. Sass, in Mali and Gena, we are keeper next, next month. Uh, you're killing yourself, maybe. That's what we call break, breakthrough and break even in, in business. So it will take you time to break through and break even. Got that? Got that? Thank you. Are we still good, guys? Sure. Ma'am, you gave us five rings, right? Five rings. Earrings. How much does it cost for one earring to manufacture it? Eight hundred rand. And you spend your last money. That's why you don't have even a weave, right? You can't afford that. <laughs> right? I like you. Bluetooth high five? Thank you. <laughs> Look. 
Some of us cannot, can, cannot afford expensive clothes because we're investing in businesses. Yeah. We don't. I'm not breaking, but I just wake up in the morning, choose what car I want to come here. I'm in Rodiport. They woke me up around seven and said, okay, you need to be early. Where's Palapala? Said, you need to be early. Then I had to rush here. Because why? I value my business as a business coach. I value my business as a director of a company. Right? Because without this event, there's no way I'm going to make money. <laughs> Who came here with, with a taxi? Yes, taxi, taxi. Say at, at the back, how much did you spend coming here? 15 rand. 15 rand. Then how are you planning to make it back today, now? That 15 rand, it's a lot of money. Trust me, it's a lot of money. How are you planning to make it back? You don't have a plan to make that, that 15 rand back. You spend that money to come here. You, you wanted to invest in literacy. But now there is no plan to make that money back. The money is out. As I said, we're too comfortable to spend money. And too lazy to make money. You can sit there and say, not, not really, but it's fact. It's reality. See, see. I'm not going to teach a kid to go in, but keep, keep it low. Russell is class. I'm going to drive him in, I'm not sure. Guys, we're too comfortable in spending money instead of saving money, investing money. There are things that we are failing to do as black people. Actually, we are not failing, but we are lazy to think about them. As old as we are, we cannot differentiate between savings, budgeting, and investing. That's why we keep falling on our financial plan. That's why we don't have financial freedom. Most of us as black people, we don't have financial freedom. We're making money, but we don't have financial freedom. We're getting salaries every month, but we don't, we don't have financial freedom. It's because we don't know the difference of savings, budgeting, and investing. You save for rainy days. You save for umta and amaga You take that money. You take the child to a doctor to a clinic. You save sas among another mad end lini. Our words of thirty million prisons you take it amad. You take from your savings. And budgeting, you budget for a red jacket. You don't just go out and buy a red jacket without a budget. And when you budget, trust me, you, when you budget, look, you will save your stress from Mr. Price. You will save yourself a stress from who was calling you and say, hey, you haven't paid your account. Because now you know how to budget for what you want. You don't want to indebt yourself by going out and getting things on credit. If you can master the art of saving for rainy days. He's in business. Uh, he has a client who paid him 100 rand today. But maga figendi, ish, aguna tamadi, aguna cooking oil, aguna twai, umtanu ya kalofu na mazim. He's gonna take money from that profit that he has 100 rand. So now the business no longer has 100 rand. Yeah, now instead of having a money box in the end for such savings, he's using the business money. Well, not because it's really good. The tea is coming to Daviton today. <laughs> okay, let me leave here. Tea is coming to Daviton today, and you want to come there looking presentable. You rush to Mr. Price to get a jacket. <laughs> no, not the red one. <laughs> You're rushing to Mr. Price to get a jacket, and you're opening an account. You forgot about budgeting. Guys, simple thing. Financial literacy is here in our mind. But we're too lazy to think. When I started business, I was selling chicken dust. Yeah, I like that, that guy. Chicken man, where are you? My dog. I like you. 
With the money I made there, I invested on my, my property management company. And when we're doing management, we're doing maintenance, we do landscaping. I took the money and invested on my business development consultation firm. And now uh, we have an office inside Mabonya Mall. The second office is in Maboneng. With the money I make, with my consultations, remember when you call me, when you come to consult, we charge, right? <laughs> I can I can tell. With the money I make from my consultation firm, I took the money and I invested on a fleet maintenance and car servicing company, of which we are busy now with the Franchise Association of South Africa. We will be launching it as a franchise. And next year we are launching our fully functional our business development college. We're launching five campuses. We'll have a campus in Val, we'll have a campus in Pretoria, Limpopo, Free State, and Venda. So in a nutshell, that's how you reinvest in business. You don't make money and spend money. Yeah, I have money, but I'm, I'm not glowing. I can't afford that because I'm still building. Yeah, when well, are you broke yet to bought a new jacket? People who don't have money, they like spending money. You, un you understand? People who don't have money, they like spending money instead of investing money to make more money. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Malikese, South Africa's multi-award winning business development coach, accredited investment practitioner, business rescuer, and business analyst. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So please come to the front, Kupari uh, uh, uh Mr. Maluleka, a round of applause. Can we just first get a, a picture of you without the prize, um, the giveaway? Why did you go to my jacket and pick up pants? Thank you so much. Just the last one. Thank you. One last round of applause to uh, Mr. Maluleke. Yo, Siswam. Yazin. Jacket Yako. And I want like a moment to know what you are and you're smart. I'm trying to. So, um, Approaches are different, and sometimes a different approach cannot get to you the right way. But at the end of the day, a fact is a fact. I think take away what you want to take away. The truth hurts. I remember when I was told, like, yeah, no, you don't know about this, you don't know about that. I was like, yeah, but still it's my business. But that was stopping me from getting to the next level. And sir has, has, has challenged us to say, we need to go back and learn these things and keep on reinvesting as tough as it is so that our business can get to the next level. All right, so just give me a second. And then, and then. Ten, 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 ten. Ah, and Chapeling Matso Homan. Ten, 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 ten. Ten, 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 ten. Um. Yes, man. A knowledge I get there. Oh, man. So these glasses, um, I just got them today, like now, outside, net bank. These are net bank glasses, shades, the braille, the brails, futures too bright. Courtesy of net bank. Speed points are also available. Um, lastly, before we go on to our networking session, 
I remember speaking at an event. I had my books. People came with cards. They're like, Spoo, we want your books. I didn't have a speed point. I lost more than 10,000 on that day. Because being on a speed point, people are like, but how can you not have a speed point in this day? So NetBank has got pocket pocket pause. Pause. Point of sale. Oh, pocket. I need to pause. It's the P-O-S. It's a pocket pause. Point of sale. Speak to NetBank and see if they can get you one. Get one from Net. It's, go it's going to help so that you don't lose the sale. Right. So far, so good. We've got our networking session coming up now, now, and then we're going to have uh, uh, Mr. 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 Tebo, who's in the building from Bremer Logistics. If you're driving around Kempton Park, I remember at your book launch what you said. I'm like, that's Bremer Logistics. There's going to have a fire chat. Fire chat. You want to listen. You want... He's from Davidson to tell us his story. What we're going to do now is network. I know, I saw some of you. You came with, you were early. You, you didn't move seats. You didn't move seats at all. You can't come to an event like this and not network. And one of the mistakes I used to make, I must be honest, guys, I would go to an event and I'd be like, I don't know. I don't Or sometimes you're scared or you have a fear or you, you don't know. That person, what they do, what they have. So, what we're going to do very quickly before we go outside. Please, can everyone stand up? No, don't worry, you're not going to sit down. <laughs> All right. For the next 15 minutes, 10 minutes, we are going to network. We are giving you a target. When that 15 minutes is up, please make sure that you have met five new people. Yeah, I, I know. I know. No, I'm not three. I'm not three. Five. Five new people. And not the one that you came with. No, but this one is one. Okay, sing selling are four. Okay. So, here's an opportunity as well for you to pitch your business. That for, Who are you? What do you do? Where are you from? What do you need? Etc. Let's start networking. Go to a new table. Please don't leave your cell phones and your bags on the table. You'll go back to your tables. Let's start networking. Let's start networking. Go to a new table. Go to a new table. Meet someone new. Target five. Five new people. Five new people. Five new people. Please don't leave. Five new people. Five new people, please don't leave. We still got the 50,000 to give away. We've got our Mbaula chat. More to give away. Five new people. Who are you? What do you do? What do you need? Target is five. To our online audience, we're having a networking session. Please look out on our social media platforms. You want to be at our, at our next session. We're networking, meeting new people. You want to be here. But thank you so much for tuning in, for joining us from wherever you are. Continue to share on our social media platforms. We love you and we hope to see you soon in your township. Five new people. Let's network. Let's network. Let's network. Exchange business cards. Exchange contact details. Five new people. Lo on a funu guya guye, iya guye, uyo peti mal. At least five new people. Let's continue to use our hashtag, hashtag together. Bekele beke. Hashtag join us for tea. Five new people. Let's network. Please 
please do not leave. No, I'm fine. I would love a cappuccino. But I'll speak to Carol. Please do not leave. We still got our 50,000 Rand to give away. Grand prize. Dar networking. Yes, network. Exchange business cards, exchange contacts. Move to the next one. Five new people. Target five. Five. You need gardening services, two mellows here. Yeah. Five new people. Do not leave. We're nearly done. Masote dile when you're done. How ferite? Move to another person. Octavia is here from NetBank. If you'd love to get a point of sale, eh? speed point. She's with us. For more information, When you're done, move to the next table. Move to the next individual. Five new people. Let's network. Let's network. Even me, I'm available to be met. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Unless you're going to the bathroom or you're going to exhibitors. New individual, new person, five new people.
Five minutes left. Five minutes left. So look at the, the voice. The, the seven, the six. Three more minutes, three more minutes. Three more minutes. Let's continue to network. Three more minutes. Alright, you can still go outside and check out the exhibition stands as well. Go outside and check the exhibition stands. Please uh, take the opportunity as well to go outside. Exhibition stands. I'm loving the networking. I'm loving the jackets, even the green ones. <laughs> Thank you so much to NetBank, partner and sponsor, headliner, for making it possible. Remember, we said five people, five, move. If you're number three, move. Two more. Two more. Social media, hashtag together, Beke Libeke. Hashtag join us for tea. Let's continue to network. Visit our exhibition stands. Let's visit our exhibition stands as well. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Two minutes. Sell it two minutes. Two more minutes. We also have lunch. Two more minutes. Before we continue with our program,
All right, we'll continue to network. Ladies and gentlemen, please can we come inside for our final session? We'll still have time to go to our exhibition stands. Now they see me. All right, please, can you take your seat? So we can get close to wrapping up our program. So we can wrap up our program. Thank you so much. You're on eight. Amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. Please, can we come inside? Can we come inside, please? Please, can we come inside? We'll have time to visit our exhibitors. Ushers, please, can you assist in bringing people inside? Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> please could we take our seats can we take our seats please Can we please take our seats? Oh, we're taking our seats. Masha. 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 Mm. Alephe, let's see. Just Masha. Masha, what, what do you do? I do digital marketing. Um, I do animation, web design, app design. So if you have an app idea, hit me up. If you want to market your book on social media, hit me up. If you want to have a nice website where you promote your your brand, yeah. please don't go. No? I'm not gonna go. All right, thank you so much. Please, could we take our seats? Please, could we take our seats? Oh, my goodness. All right, by a show of hands, how many of you met five new people?
Exhibitors, please, please come back. If you are exhibiting, please come to me. Exhibitors, please come to me. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Exhibitors, please come to me. Exhibitors, is this everyone? Exhibitors? Gents, are you exhibit? Okay. So, exhibitors, are you all here? Yes. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring you on stage. Né? You're going to have just a minute and 30 seconds. It's like you're pitching. Oh, just to okay. tell people about your business, what you do, etc. etc. Uh, if you've got products, please bring your products, but don't bring the whole show. <laughs> just something to show the people, right? Mm. You're getting straight in. So please, uh, um, I'll get the list of the exhibitors, and then you just, when I call you, you come to the front. Okay? okay. Fantastic. Be ready. Oh, I know I'm not exhibiting anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get our show underway. Next up, we... Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Can I please have your attention, please? Thank you so much. Next up, we have our exhibitors. I know some of you, Liliko, the stalls to go and see what they offer, but now we're giving them an opportunity to tell us what they do and what they offer. So we're going to have our exhibitors. We're going to have a powerful Mbaula chat afterwards. And then we wrap up and we have lunch. Right. By show of hands, how many of you met five new people? Five? Or more? Hey, because it was difficult, man, to, hey. You know? Fantastic. That's what it's about. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's, let's get the show underway. Imnandile uh, Archer, are you here? You are here? All right. He, he, he is here with us. Imnandile uh, Archer, one of our exhibitors. Thank you, brother. Thanks. Okay. The reason. Uh, yeah. Uh, afternoon. Uh, we're still morning. Ninja and guys. Yeah, uh, So the reason why I didn't want him to like hold it like this for me is because like see, thing is a robot here, so usually I have it at the robot like this, right? Yeah. So we like you, brother. Thanks for the assistance, though. Anyway, yeah, Mara. So Tina Vele Bas busy. Uh, just speaks for itself, honestly. Mang I taste the Vele Zozo and if you wanna go there, we've got the taste and everything. You know, um, so what we do, we actually mix it ourselves, you know. Uh, the signature that uh, we have in the archer is spice. That's the reason why it's different from any other archer that you'd find at Lokshin. And one thing I was telling my, my partner is that we want to change the slogan to Equapa um, side, guys. Yeah, instead, yeah, standard. Thanks, guys. Support any 
Uh, it goes for, the, the, the small one goes for 25, uh, this one goes for 30, this one goes for 50. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you so much. So, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Um, contact details, oh, do, yeah, you, yeah. do you do online, uh, <laughs> you know, where you based? Okay, so we based the uh, Foslo side, guys. Uh, there's a place called the Cheporki, that's where we live. But uh, if you guys step outside, you'll, you'll, you'll find us with the flyer. There's a flyer there. All you have to do is just contact us. At so you're going to speak to us, whether it's uh, WhatsApp, whether it's any other thing, you know. But the, the contact details are on the, the, the flyer because I can't give you the number. And let's see if you can Okay, it's 073. Uh, <laughs> 073. Uh, Zero seven three five zero three five three four one, and thanks for who put these available. Who the vele? I na say to Lily Flyer there. Thanks, but uh, there's flyers for those that get the number outside. Okay, it's zero seven three guys, five zero three five three four one. Le acha kwapa side. All right, thank you so much, my brother. Next up, we have uh, Levels, Apparel Africa. Levels, are you here? Koparisha Wabona, Levels. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you. Levels, over to you. Thank you. Sanbani, uh, my name is Simpiwe. I am the brand ambassador here at Levels, Apparel Africa. We are based here in Davidson. Um, sitting in a whole variety of clothing. We have hats, we have golf uh, t shirts, we have bikes, we have nje, all varieties. And we are here outside. We are a brand that has been inspired by our township, especially Roxian culture. We followed the brand in culture. And then, Manjo, we are trying to incorporate our businesses. Jesse, look, Haji, Sonke, Nayo, Eleven, Tawazuk, Seven, Zana, No, Puti, Loyans, Ama, We are able to go to see, go, you say, according to your own lane. We use the logo on your lane. So, Nayo, we are able to go to Nabo, Wong, Kabo, Puti, Nabo, CC, Ebis, Nabo, Abatin, Sayo, whether it's jewelry, whether it's clothing, caps, nick, or tulo, but we are able to see Sitang and Sonke. And then, since in day one, we do not focus only on our brand, but we focus on everyone. So, this is what we're all about. And yeah, thank you for your support. It's our first time. It's our first time. Yeah, we thank you so much. I love this. You know, it it, used, it, it reminds me of as must promote us the city as a life in my levels. You know, levels. So there's, I think there's a they can really create a unique story around that brand. Right. So that is uh, levels. Levels are Shela Nguti and contact details and oh well. Nwabisa, PT Design and Printing Solutions. Nwabisa, are you here? All right. Nwabisa is printing. She's not here. Uh, designer Water. Are you here? Designer Water is not here. Let's move. Test. Did you? Okay. She is here, but Ong Niga E. Okay. Delight Sight Creations. Delight Sight Creations. Okay. So, my God, cleaning supplies. Oh, you are here. Thank you so much. Can we give Uzandi uh, Swa a round of applause? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. San Marini. Ninjani, uh, Nyapila, Ikamalam Guzani, Swa, 
I'm from the company called Somagatle Cleaning Supplies. It's some K Cams. So basically, we are based in Katle Hong, and what we do, we manufacture cleaning products. We do dishwashing liquids, like we have hand soap, we've done sanitizers, and we also offer. Um, to people who want to do their own products. So we train people on how to manufacture products. Okay, and my contact details um, 076-145-7171 and the other number 073-905-1696. Thank you. 076-945-7171. And the other one, 073-905-1696. It's a hand soap. Okay, we also have the hand soaps. This one, uh, people is on the bathrooms. So this is what we have. We manufacture that as well. Yes. Okay, this one we have 50 mils. We have 50 mils for all of them for 5 rand 99 and see our products and try and use them, you can get them for 5 rand 99 And then this one is 15 rand, it's a dishwashing liquid. Yes. Okay, so... Oh, okay. Um, hand soap, which is 5 rand? 5 rand 99 and then dishwashing. No, it don't. It's her, it's her business. Oh, cause you and you can speak to her after. We just want to get the prizes, yeah. And then dishwashing is fifteen. Thank you so much. All right, can we give her a round? Engage her afterwards. Thank you. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you so much. All right, Kumbari. Uh, Multi harvest. Are you here? Kumbari, are you here? So, so I want to let dishwashing powder lay green. Hey, green. We make a show goodbye. I tell you, because everything is green. I want to let dishwashing powder lay green. Yeah. So, so let's move right into it. Let's move right along. We've got a couple more. Uh, Judy Rex Technologies. Judy Rex Technologies. Abeko, Katleho, Yaliseho projects. Katleho, it's you. All right, Katleho is. Please, can we give a round of applause? Kikatleho, Yaliseho projects. Kupalim Shapiling Matsoho. For sure, I'll do that for you. Not a problem. So you take the mic. Yeah. All right. Sunmunan, Ninjani, Nyapila, E. Kamalam Munontan, Nairobi, Masango. I'm from Katakoya Liseho Projects. It's a company, a SI Kalam 2018. But then we have Nyeleti Hair Care Products, which is the trade under I Katakoya Liseho. It's been six months old and it's a hair care range product. Specialized Gakulugu 4C hair afro and your dreadlocks, but we do assist with any other type of hair. I'll explain the products. Uh, here we have e hair growth oil, hair growth oil as Mic test one two. Guys, it's the first time being here, like doing this, so please bear with me. Yes, I'm a bit shy. Our hair growth oil assists with your hair, your growth. If you is light, it assists in your hair. And it Assist Nabu Baba with their beard. Yes, Ia Kulisa and Ianza in Chevera Baba in China, Ibe in Tene. I come and I eat a biscraffy. 
Yes, you see. And then we have a uh, hair tangling spray. Our hair tangling spray uh, assists in a manner, especially when you've placed your hair. And then Mauka, this cutness ni ngubana these white notes on your hair. Mauti akama bamba ni inwele and stuff. So this assists in making sure guti ziatamba and only when you comb your hair does it come out, but only le log ngola go inwele log puma yane. So this assists in the, the hair tangling spray. Thank you. We have our African black shampoo. Obviously this assists to go to All the ingredients in our products are natural ingredients. So if you can read them, there kunama directions and what we, it includes on the product. Ne? Uh, we have a conditioner. Immediately after you're done washing your hair with your shampoo, then you use your conditioner to wash your hair. Ne? And now it works the same in my natural ingredients. All the details are on the product. Yeah, I'll tell them. Uh, the last one is the shea butter. It assists in your hair. It doesn't build up on the hair, so it's very good. Uh, we are going to use as your moisturizer. Ne? All our products, guys, the nicest thing now, Uguti, all the ingredients on the products, I told them what to put in there. So the, the company that I'm working with, Enga Sister, to produce the product, they took the ingredients that I told them to put in their products. The price is gold, is this for, uh, hair growth oil is 95 friends. Yes. 95 friends. The detangling spray is 80 rands. African black shampoo is 95 friends. Hair share butter is 90 rands. Restoring conditioner is 90 friends. The whole combo is 450. And if you want to order, you can order on uh, on our WhatsApp line. Right for I want to see people writing. <laughs> uh, not yet. Zero eight four three nine three eight five eight three. Anyone surrounded uh, staying in Davidson or Kwazadusa, we deliver for free, and outside it's hundred rand for Korea. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also, I work at the hair like Nick, at the hair, cut in Chebe, Caddy. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, projects. Next up, A2Pay. You know what happened? A2Pay is coming up next. She asked, Are you selling online? She said, No. She's running a digital marketing online web. And she said, Let's connect. Business. Yeah. Business. Business, right here, because we are online. A to pay? Are you here? Okay, A to pay is not here. Spongi, uh, Vivian Maseko. Are you here? She is here. Ah, okay. Kupagmi Shapiling Matsoho. She sells shoes and bags. This one. Okay. San Bonani. Ninjani. Napila, are you guys feeling good? We learned so much with this workshop, right? I'm actually an uh, experience with security industry, right? So it's security, it's baby. So uh, what I'm doing with security, we install my CCTV cameras, see fire and gate motors, and if maybe you've got and Ufungu Sizok install a Lama camera and do your monitoring for you. We we'll also do that, right? So, e business, it's Ugushawake Enterprise. A business learning, I've registered it, I think it's two months back, right? So, e business, sales and marketing. If you have any product that you are selling, but you don't know Gutsunga Market Sakanjan, I do marketing for you. And I also help my business plan profiles and all of that right so these these shoes and a bag 
is from a sister of mine. She has been doing a business for, I think it could be four to five years now. Like, um, thing is, I'm a bag and shoes and also clothes. Then, I got to love and sing 350. Then, a bag, we think it's 200 rand. Then, you can go outside. There's a variety of bags. You can check the corner of Then, there's also another guy that I've spotted. Because I also go around the location and support some small businesses and actually help those businesses. There's a guy that I actually supported. Okay, he's a unique company manufacturer. He's, a, he's actually a shoemaker, right? So he wants to manufacture Katsula from the scratch. We enter from the protein to assembly and all of that. So the guy is currently looking for a funding. Uguti, I I actually a missionary because Utinga industrial machines, right? And uh, the plan is actually also help to support in the hour, a place where you can um, like empower youth and help them with this. Because if there's anything that we need as a country, it's actually um, empowerment and to create jobs. So the project that I'm working on now. It's that project where I can actually help the guy. That's my baby as well, because I've 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 spotted that guy through um, a close friend of mine, right? So the project that we're currently working on, yeah. So I think I spoke to um, Tiamo or something. I've told him that I'll send him the show to join a private essay, and I'll take it from there. Thank you. So you can go out and outside and check uh, stock. Thank you. Desmond Sipo Masinga Masinga Crafting and Embroideries. Are you here? Desmond here? Oh, Desmond's not here. Remember, we're still giving away 50,000. Don't go. All right, Lerato Moli from Moli Ford Enterprise, are you here? Lerato is not here. I think we've got about three or four. Uh, Lufuno, Lufuno, are you here? Lufuno, please come to the front. You, you yeah? Tosh Detergents, Lufuno from Tosh Detergents, part of the family. Thank you so much. So good to see you. All right, I'll hold that for you. Good afternoon. Have you ever walked inside a shopping aisle and wondered which detergent to buy? Either the brand that you've known all your life or rather the cheapest one on the shelf. Well, I have a solution for you. Tosh Detergents is a proudly South African company that manufactures quality detergents that are made from the purest form of raw materials. We focus on sustainability. That is what sets us apart. And our products can be found on Take A Lot. You can find them in Macro Marketplace selected spa stores. We would like you to partner with us since we are a proudly African member. We, our products are SABS approved. I am Rufunora Suisui, founder and of Tosh Detergents. I am part of the economic solution this country so desperately needs. And I believe that I will be the one to reignite hope into millions of young South Africans. I thank you. Thirty rand for the antibacterial, twenty-five rand for the multi-purpose cleaning liquid, twenty-seven rand for the dishwashing liquid. That's the antibacterial. So this is two in one. <laughs> this, as you know, also disinfect, it's thirty rand, and the last product is the yellow, which is the thick bleach for the intimate spaces. You disinfect. Thank you. Where were you when people were pitchy? <laughs> Thank you so much. She's been part of the T family for a couple of years. And um, every time she gets an opportunity, she, she delivers. Wow. All right. Unfortunately, we didn't get the other names. Gents? Gents? Buffett, please come to the front.
Wow. We didn't get the information from the team, but I'll still give you guys the opportunity. Okay, uh, Kamala, I'm with Clarence. With Clarence. All right, brother. Over to you. And then, Uzokaya, Ubadi, ne? No, no, I'm Mike. Oh. Do you want to go to Sure. No, I'm Mike. I'm chilling. Uh, my name is Clarence Matebula. I'm from Guatemala, and uh, I'm the owner and director of Gambari Multi Harvest Loading Treatment, whereby we manufacture our own loading from pattern making, from drafting, uh, to a complete clean garment. Uh, to a complete clean garment. As you can see, uh, this I've used uh, each early uh, to play around with the garment. And here, uh, check, I've used it in him. And these are the earrings, because you know, uh, when you deal with umswenko, yeah. we call it umswenko. Melu nuge gam nandi. Yang son, melu faga matik. Yang son, anye lung tseng se le impasla. Ela yang son. So meleng pege gu tsao merem. Bak matik, yang son. Yeah, so basically, it's in a manufacturer's dealer game pass. Yang son, yang son, laga lagu Facebook. So laga lagu Instagram. Young son, uh, if maybe if you look for the order, I'll follow Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, young son, up young son. Yeah. So, I come again to Facebook, it's Kambari Multi Harvest uh, Clothing Treatment. Ne? Yeah. This is Instagram, ne? it's uh, Kambari Textile uh, Fashion uh, Clothing. Young son. So, go Instagram, na corner, same thing. Uh, Kambari they have a loading treatment. So, uh, but first, we mean a young thing is supporting, young son, because we want to, like, uh, on a vision, young son. We want to, oh, 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 three miles, young son. And then we want to, you know, we're happy, young son. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Whereby I was buying a t-shirt, I was buying caps, a, a, a chosy, whereby I was selling around the, at the streets and at the fashion events. So uh, at that time, I had a lot of complaints, man. The quality of the fabric, the quality of the stitching, sometimes the size, you see, you're going to go to I think a full skill. A full skill at Techno Self. We are born. Bangling skill, I'm managing a barra. None never born. A barra. A barra. You are Zenze, the Petini Army. Now we are born. Lenny Shines on the soup. Yesterday, I was busy with this one so that you can see which I went to a barra. None never born. It's a pretty pocket with a yoke. We are born in a pocket, our fun. Yeah, this one is an extended uh, pocket. This one. Okay, I see again, again. I'm going to support you. And I'm going to focus on youth. I'm going to focus on youth. I'm going to focus on my tracks. I'm going to focus on my Puma. I'm going to focus on my youth. I'm going to focus on my youth. So I'm going to focus on my youth. I'm going to focus on my youth. I'm going to focus Yabon, and the food sim funugans and funuk chala ini, if fabric e cotinium, whereby bang chalu cotinium, linen, and you linen from what? From a silkworm, or fish melon colote, a ma butterfly. Yabon, a fagger rumin, a ma butterfly. Yabon, as tonel a macacuna corn, a basin manufacture is silk yami, so whatever linen, and so I can use it in a hydroponic system. So you make as any hundred thousand, Shem. You have been your rent flat, and she had to me. You plant a ma cotinua me, and the food see yo. Tingi ye, I Shiria Bab. My brother, over to you. Sambonani, Nijani, 
e ya pele e ka bitso ke chimane wa gona mo ba wa mona e am the founder and the 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 producer i can say so the manufacturer of vuta africa so what i do is that i'm producing the bags i'm manufacturing the bags from scratch so i deal with uh, the leather too much because it's the stone one so i do it from scratch because now i see with i when i was in the same shops in katazi i'm finished i'm right i'm not saying i'm cool so i'm going to do it it's in a skill so that i can do it for myself so i do bags and then clothing in a corner we deal with i can print only so I can like respect to my rules, but we are the Africans. Back to our rules. That's why I'm fighting all the men who tune. Back to our rules. Since I started in the Zanga party, since the Zanga party started, Zanga party. Yeah, yeah. One, two, one, two. Yeah. So, so very. Business Ganjal, so very I produce the bags, side bag, can bag, all the bags that you want. Just manufacture from scratch. Yeah. So a Facebook page which is a African child, and then on WhatsApp you can also text me uh, my number, it's zero seven two. Seven seven five eighty seventy one. So yeah, all the bags and then uh, my earrings now a corner and then name part of footy for the ladies all sizes slender, stula, yoki to sayens. I when I get us up on when we do we do it all. So I just want to thank even the opportunity laying it all to pitch uh, my business. So when you want to feel too. Thank you so much to um, our exhibitors. Can we please give them a round of applause? It's, I, I love the confidence, man. Like when you believe, okay, obviously, you put out the total, I go perfect, 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 but we are stamped. And you believe in yourself and you believe in your product. And as you go, you'll grow, you'll continue to refine. So big ups to all our exhibitors. We'll continue to support you in, in watching. And sometimes people may not support you now, but at least they know. Should something happen, you know, it's weddings every weekend. Kimanyalo, you want to look good. We're looking for African. What, what, print, what, what. They are here. All right. So, we've got the Mbaula chat coming up with uh, Mr. Tepo, founder of Prima Logistics and uh, Bulilani Balabala. You want to listen to this one. Kupareba Shapeling Matso Bulilani is coming through for the Mbaula chat. After the Mbaula chat, we're going to have uh, lunch and then we wrap up the session. But this is a big, big one. So, firstly, I will call up the founder of Prima Logistics, Mr. Tepo, sir. Please come to the front. Oh, come on, guys. We can do better than that. You, you will hear the story. Because sometimes what I was talking about is about to... Hey, you want to listen and hear the story. This is in Baula Chat. And it's going to be facilitated by... Ulelani Balabala. Can we give him a round of applause as well? One, two. It's on. One, two. One. Yes, perfect. Two. This one, yeah. Uh, how are you guys doing? We're into some product placement. Uh, you asked me. Yeah, this feels way better. Uh, shout out to the guys uh, for the setup. In actual fact, that's how we've always visualized the Mbaula chat. Um, because before I, I introduce our, our headline, um, heavy hitter, you know, this is how we've always envisioned it. Because we've always had these amazing conversations 
as in Gamleni, but the fireside chat, but in it's a Baula chat, you know, with our uncles, whether it was sitting around a little fire, or if you grew up like me, like us, and it wasn't, and it was the stove, less summer laugh. And then by Agla, Agutu, and Zeni. So we were always guided. So we've always had, um, you know, that sort of uh, spaces, you know, and I think reclaiming and claiming those spaces is super important to us because so that we never position ourselves in such a way where we, we act as if we were never taught. You know, we're always taught, but Abelung, but you know, it's uh, get invited to the dinner table. So we are inviting everyone to the Mbawula chat. You know, something that we all are super familiar with, you know. Um, yeah, if the guys can give me some fire, I want some fire here. <laughs> give me some fire. But uh, you know what, um, I'm very grateful to everyone who's here, but I think just most importantly, um, also for this particular segment, and maybe let me talk about what the segment is. The heavy hitter segment is to be able to give faces to amazing black local entrepreneurs who started in the very same townships as all of us here, but have grown in, in a massive way. They've grown massive, impactful organizations that are impactful to the economy, that are impactful to the ecosystems and the value chains that they're in, that are very important for the livelihoods of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that are reliant on them, that are employed directly through them, or the thousands that are indirectly employed through them by their service providers. That is what the Mbawula chat is, because you know every time Bratepo, I talk to entrepreneurs, and I think Naomi years ago, you know, not to say I'm not inspired by uh, Warren Buffett or, or anyone else, you know, here, here, here's my direct person I can touch, I can feel, who's the blueprint of how you build a multinational organization, you know, South Africa's largest black-owned logistics company. You know, and these stories we don't tell enough, you know, but I'll always retweet a SpaceX, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But if we then take a centric approach that says, we are then gonna support our own. And whenever you wanna send a parcel anywhere in South Africa, you know, you don't courier it, you prima it. Yeah, you use the e-black box. You can look it up now as we're having the chat. You use the e-black box, you lose Brima, you look, at, look up Brima Logistics, you can send anything. Bottle of water, plus ball pen, plastic, at a click of a button right now. So, so that the disruption of those spaces is reliant on us being con conscious of the people and the players who are within the space. Much earlier on I said, we, you know, no, not even much earlier on I didn't say this, we undermine the value of one rand or 10 rand. But if we were conscious about where we put our money and where we spend our money, then we'd be very impactful um, of the spaces. Fairless, toveless, umlilo, umlilo. Because I know this man is gonna bring it. And a beautiful thing, a beautiful thing is everyone is gonna walk out of here with a copy of Bratepo's book um, today. So after the session, you don't, after the session, the team has set up a station outside for him. We're gonna get his hands working. Um, I hope you've got medical aid because you're gonna sign every book and we will not be held, us, T, NetBank will not be held liable for any public liability claims. It's a disclaimer, but you will be signing and you definitely want to read this book. So Bratepo Mikoa is the founder of Prima Logistics. Um, which has innovated um, a lot of beautiful products. I mean, I love the e-black box over and above everything. Is also the owner of Prima Cafe, which is a local cafe which is based here in Davidson. But a seasoned, disruptive leader, entrepreneur, you want to know. What's up? How are you, sir? Uh, our mic, I think. Can you just increase the volume? For us. So without even starting, Jay, you already bent the mic. <laughs> the power. Yeah, yeah, this sounds better now. So, for example, maybe just by way of introduction, Utwa Davidson, Ditam Gekasiao, maybe just take us, maybe just introduce yourself and then just take us into how and how did you get into this entrepreneurship thing? Yeah, okay, cool. 
I think this one works now. Uh, before I start, um, good afternoon. And then I am touched. I am inspired. I am taken. I am lost for words. And I would like to take this opportunity, if we can, and join me in give in clapping for the entrepreneurs that were standing in front of us with their products that they showcase. If please, we can do that. Okay, uh, big up to them. Without wasting any time, um, Bulelani, uh, my, my brother, what you do is great. Um, I call this a geek. Um, I believe that I'm talking to entrepreneurs now, people who are taking me back when I started. And I'm not saying it's been easy, and I'll share just now. So when Bulelani called me and says, let's
All right, let's get to it. We'll take the pictures. In position for the fourth. Let's announce. Very important. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, pitching challenge, Davidson, finalist. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, and, and then there's a caveat that was thrown earlier on. Uh, for the winning pitcher, uh, Bratepo has also then decided to contribute um, for our mentorship weekly. But over and above that, they will then commit cash towards the branding of the digital branding for that business. So, The prize is now worth more than 50,000. You may continue. Hey. Hi. I, I, I just see it good. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we need a drum roll. 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 Position number two. Walking away in second place with the silver prize. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for position number two. <laughs> and our position number two is Lebo M. Picture. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is Level M, position number two. Oh, hey, what's going on now? It's going to be a. Yeah, we need a mouse. Um. It, this this is this is historic. We've never done something like this before. And entrepreneurs are saying, yeah, but we, we need cash. We, we, we need more than what we are getting. And today we have a winner. A drum roll. He knows he's number one, but he needs a drum roll. He needs a drum roll. He needs a drum roll. No enter surprise. No, I don't say. Ladies and gentlemen, winner of our pitching competition taking place in Davidson, right here, walking away with the grand prize of 50,000 rand, is Dimelo! Let's put our hands together for Dimelo! Congratulations to Dimelo. Can you please come to the other side? Tapelo. You go, boy! Once again, let's put our hands together for Tumsa Tumelo! Alright, thank you so much. Uh, judges, please take a seat. Oh, please go. Oh, please go back. Please, judges, please, please come again. Yeah, please come again. If it was nothing for this tour, there was a man. All right, so no, 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 my man, no, no, no. Um, we've said what the prize is, we've said what he walks away with. Uh, your, your passion, your confidence, don't stop. 
there's more. You can take your business to the next level. Quickly, any inspiring words, parting words to an entrepreneur who's sitting here? Maybe who's on the verge of giving up? What would you like to say very quickly? And you can also say shout out, you know? Like, <laughs> very quickly. I don't know if this is really inspiring, but uh, every time I'm on the... No, not every time I'm on the verge of quitting because that doesn't really happen often. But um, every time I face a lot of challenges, I kind of look up at God and ask him, is that the best you have? That's it. Is that the best you have? So it's very clear that he finds his strength from God. When you feel like giving up, go to wherever your source is and draw strength. Tapelo, on behalf of T, we wish you all the best. Massive thank you once again, NetBank, for making this possible. Uh, to all our other partners as well, Nespers as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tapelo, all the best, brother. Can we give him another round of applause? Thank you. Tapelo. Tapelo. Tumelo. Tumelo. Yeah, no, you can take pictures afterwards. Yeah. They're sitting next to each other. Please, Tumza, make sure that you don't go. We need to do an interview with you afterwards. Uh, and we'll put it out on, our, on all our social media platforms and we'll keep spreading the love so there's more to it. One more time, a massive round of applause to Tumelo, our winner. All right, I think our team is ready. Our team is ready. Um, our mics are ready, so we're going to continue with the fireside, fireside chat, Mbaula chat. Before we do that, Rachel, please, can you come to the front? You, you are the only one who doesn't have a gift. So, and you're a judge, a shame, Mara. We've got a gift for you. Please come to the front. Rachel from NetBank, can we just, uh, one of our judges, can we give her a round of applause? We've got a gift for you on behalf of T. It's a pleasure. Oh, okay. Oh, alright. So it's a bag. It's a bag from the entrepreneurs. Let me hold this for you. And he has products. Who knew that I'm going to natural hair? Thank you so much. Hair products as well. earrings as well yeah. all, all of these products are from our exhibitors we didn't buy them somewhere we got them from our exhibitors supporting our exhibitors so big big thank you thank and you, so thank you can you just pause for a photo all right thank you are we ready to continue okay we found some kind of way after the Mbaula chat, we have lunch, we network, and then we're done. But you want to listen to this one. Mr. Tepo, Clarissa, I may have. But this time it, it shall not prosper. We'll make a plan. Please come to the front. As he comes to the front, let's please give him a round of applause. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's continue. Let's see if it works. <laughs> it does. <laughs> no, no, it, it has to, it definitely has to work this time. And thank you so much to just bearing with us with the technical issues. And thank you for the venue for being so great and hospitable in helping us uh, through this. Um, so, Pratepo, um, and I think just, j just on that, thank you so much to the entrepreneurs who supplied us the gifts. We bought them. But just as well, thank you to NetBank because we were able to buy from every one of the exhibitors outside. And, and the interesting thing is, um, n you know, majority of them did, don't even have speed points. I think nine out of 10, you know, and I'll sm I mention this because every time, most of the time, the, the township market is obviously, it's, it's sometimes it's, mis it's, it's underserved. So to have an organization that's gonna come and be so committed because it's not that we don't want the product. It's that in most cases, no, no, no. Can be. Mine is on. 
Yeah. Go this one. And I think in growing organizations that are multinational, in growing organizations that are going to compete on a global scale, scale, that is where we need to be positioning our minds because we might be township by location mm. and that's, and that's the, the, you see, I've always said this, but you are now the example. We might be township by location or rather the origination of these ideas, but we've got the potential to compete on a global scale. This yeah. is the global scale. Yeah. Let's give it up for So before I hand over to him, the crystal silence that you guys have emitted, thank you in understanding and emitting that silence because we're projecting from our voices for your patience and understanding. Thank you. So I'm going to hand over to Kuputsepo mm. to just take us through who he mm. is and what the journey of starting was, what ignited. I mean, you could have worked anywhere, but you decided entrepreneurship. How did you even get to that? No, yeah, oh, I guess it's dead. We're going solo now. Yeah. Okay, I'll try and raise my voice. Uh, and I just want to say thank you, Bulelani. Um, thank you very much for, for inviting me. Um, right now. <coughs> okay, let me not sabotage it. Yeah. And thank you for, for having me here. I regard uh, TIA as a movement. Um, to me, it's like a political party that all entrepreneurs should, should ascribe to. So when he called me, he said, listen, I'm in your hood, come and help me. To me, it's a calling. It's a calling that I could not say no. It was not about here bringing books and talking to you. It was about what would be that entrepreneur of the day get from me. 
and hence I decided to show up. NetBank, thank you very much. Um, I mean, to put your money into this entrepreneurs is one way of, of investing as well. I often get asked, how did I start? <laughs> and I've, I've tried to, can I stand up? Yeah, yeah. 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 cool, yeah. Okay, much better now, much better. So I, I try to leave a footprint. I, people ask me on Twitter, uh, but before, before I say that, let me, let me intro myself, those who don't know me. My name is Tepo Mekwa. I'm the son of David Tong. And I am an entrepreneur and an author and a proprietor. You can Google what a proprietor is, <laughs> okay? We've seen a lot of deals being done uh, black people acquiring in uh, big companies and saying that shareholders in NetBank, they are not, sh they are shareholders, but they are not proprietors. In my division of a proprietor is, is, a, is, is those entrepreneurs that stood here that showcase their product. And, and, and no matter how, how small or large they are, but we all started there. I started there. And I'm going to share a gene, and I'm going to try and, and, and cramp it. And I'm going to try because it's, I mean, I, I run two brands. I run Brima Logistics, which is 17 years old. Uh, we'll, need it, we'll need three days for me to tell you. And I also started another one, which is, I think it's, it stopped being a startup now, Brima Cafe. Uh, we're going to unleash. It's 12 years old. And I've, I'm yet to define if Brima, Logis Brima Cafe is a startup. Brima Logistics is 17 years old. It employs 120 people. It's no longer a startup. It stopped being a startup at 14, at, sorry, at, at, at 14 years. Now, I need to define is Brima Cafe, when is it gonna cease to be a startup? So I often get asked and people ask me, how did you, how did you go it? Can you be, a, can you be my mentor? Then I realized there's so many of them. And I felt that I won't be able to sit with each and every one of you. Remember, this is a gig for me. Just like you'd find maybe, uh, you know, your, your celebrities go and sing at F&B. Uh, it's their gig, but this is a gig for me. Because I'd like to believe that nine to ten of people who are here are entrepreneurs. Now, coming back to how did I? I then decided that I'm going to pause. I'm going to take time. I'm going to put what I went through, through a book. And I decided to write the book. And it's not just a book that, you know, you can read it within two hours. But it will prompt you to dive deep and research. Every chapter, it's got, it's got exercises, which you have to do. And every chapter, it's got recommended reading, which you have to dive deep into. You can't just start a business without sitting down. You don't have to be a genius or have MBA to go through my book. And my book was, was a combination of, of a number of things, a number of researchers. So it's a 17 years, call it, call it 16 years of, of my work, of, of my work as an entrepreneur. And now, to tell a bit of a story, and I'll just summarize the chapters in the book because you're now gonna get a book. When I started, because when we're talking earlier on, things like, the uniqueness that is coming. What, what, what do you resolve with your, with, your, with, your, with your product or services? Because anybody can sell anything, but not anybody can, can, can resolve a particular problem. You're probably wondering, what does Brima Cafe solve? And I'll come to that. What does Brima Logistics solve? You gotta understand what core business you are in. What do you sell? We all think McDonald's, so if I can ask you, and I'd like to be interactive here, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, you allow me. Because that is, this is an opportunity for me to impact share so that when I come into the township, at least I've managed to touch two, three entrepreneurs who are going to create three, four more jobs. Because of, if you've noticed here, ne, we're not talking about government. We're not, forget about them. They are messed up, these guys. They have no clue. I tried to summarize their policy and I was like, okay, what are they saying with that? I realized there's no way it talks about entrepreneurship. It, it talks about they're gonna create jobs, they've been telling us, but they're not, in actual fact, we're losing jobs. So you and I are gonna create jobs. 
You and I are going to assist. But yes, we need them to a point where, where, where they have to make legislation. I'm not going to dive into legislation. We'll have to, you and I, at that level, try and engage with government to say, make things for, because you're an ambassador, ambassador of township entrepreneurship. So we and I have to go back and start talking to them. But let me come back to McDonald. I'm going to two, 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 two companies. You know McDonald? What do you think McDonald sells? Can someone hit me? You, my brother. Bam, you got it right. Okay, cool. Let's hit another one. Avis, Europe Car. What business are they in? Avis, Europe Car. This one you're definitely not going to get. If you get this one, I'll give you a free lunch at Brima Cafe. Hit this one. Ah, gosh, you must have been in one of my chats. Yes, financial <laughs> services. Now, okay, 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 let's see. Okay, I owe you lunch <laughs> at Rima Cafe. You can have one of my most expensive meal. Now, let's bring another one now. Tonga Tulet. You all know Tonga Tulet. What business are they in? This one you're definitely not going to get. I'll put a thousand rents to anybody who's going to get it. I'll give a thousand rands. Anybody who's going to tell me what, what, what business is Tonga Tulet in? Okay, we'll talk about it now. My brother, I owe you lunch there. So, Brima Logistics sells time. We're, in the, we're not in the courier business. Courier is a service that we do. We're in the logistic business. So if you come to me and say, Tepo, I've got a parcel to deliver to Cape Town tomorrow morning. What time? Twelve. What did I sell you? Time. And it took me a lot of time to get to understand what we sell. It's not just it happened and I knew it all. If I can tell you, I told my staff for 10 years that we are selling promise. Turns out that no, we are not selling promise. We are selling time. But there's nothing wrong about evolving. Brima Cafe, what do you think we sell? What do you think we sell? Don't tell me beggars. Don't tell me. What do you think we sell? Closer? She's closer? She's closer? I like this one. She's hot. She's getting hotter. I need someone to be hotter, hotter. What do we sell? We sell experience. Who has been inside Brima Cafe, especially now lately? Okay, yeah. You've been there, no? Now, let me tell you a story behind Brima Cafe. I'm not going to touch about Brima Logistics. I'll bring Brima Logistics around there because I believe we are in the township. I want us to talk about the township economy. That's what I want us to talk about. Twelve years back, it was me with a smaller GTI, two friends of mine who are medical doctors in the township. They just closed. It was Saturday. They closed their practice. They called me. They said, oh, yes, I said, I made a car watch. They said, listen, man, let's get something to eat. I said to them, well, not got uh, not Chesanyam, I grew up with this thing. They said, okay, what do you want to eat? I said, hey, something nice. Maybe some cilion or some well, medium rare steak, dan, what one? So I said, okay, fine. They said, okay, ah, where are we going to find this in the township? They said, okay, let's go out. So I'm telling you, bunch of three duckies. And I drive around like Bedford View. So we leave the hood. There's an active economy here. We leave the hood. We go into Bedford View, my brother. We get into Bedford View, and then they give us the menu. And then guess what I order? Salmon, 200 gram. And I, I, I stop for a moment as about, as about to, to jump into that salmon. And I said to them, but chief, tell me, guys, why did we have to drive this far to come and get this meal? They said to me, oh, God, you can, you'll you never find salmon in the township. I said to them, you are wrong. I'm going to sell salmon in the township. That's how Brima Cafe was born. So I went and looked for this property, and I said, I'm going to put a four or five star restaurant in the township. You come into the township, you've got a choice. You can find your typical goof goof, I call them goof goof, or you can find your typical nice, fine dining. You got a choice now. But it was a startup, and it's still a very much startup. In my book, let me take this one. It, there's a title that's about time. That's the second book that I'm working on. It's about time. So when I said to them, we're going to take time. We're going to understand 
this restaurant business. Because we don't understand. I don't know restaurants. I don't know how to cook. By the way, I don't even know how to cook. Now I have to employ people who can cook. But I had to understand the nitty gritties of that business. What makes that business from the moment you walk in through the door? When you look at our staff, when the plate comes to you, how the kitchen is. So I took a meal and I invited my staff to the cafe, to the to to a toilet, and I dropped a steak on the floor and I ate it. I know it sounds a bit crazy. Why now? Toilet, you eat a steak with all the staff. And I'll tell you why. Or maybe can someone tell me why? Why I did that? Yes, cleanness. Confidence. Confidence. The only challenge we've got in a township is cleanness of toilets. And I wanted to change that. And I told my step that you want to clean these toilets every hour of the hour. So if the restaurant has been there for 12 years, you can understand how many times we've cleaned that, that toilet. So now if I could be so, so pandemic about the toilet, what do you think I'm going to do with the kitchen? And before we even go there, I invited help. I said, come into my cafe. I invited fire, security. I invited just about everybody you can think of. I said, I want seal of approval in this, in this kitchen. Proper equipment. Now, these things are not easy. I, it sounds easy when I talk about them. It sounds, ah, you can just set up a restaurant. No, there's a lot of things that happen in the background. Similarly to Brima Logistics. I had to find something that was unique. So we agree, Brima Cafe in the township is unique. Very much unique. Very much. If you go there now, you'll see it's been rebranded, by the way. Now the brand is ready to be unleashed, meaning unleashed. But when I unleash the brand, which market, which area do I go to? Do I go to mall, compete with Mac and Bean? Or do I go to another township like Timbisa, set up another one, set up the same five-star hotel? Is a five-star restaurant? Is it what I'm going to do? So we understand what is our core. We sell experience. That talks to you. You said lifestyle, but we sell experience. When you come into the township and you dine, you must be able to say, wow, the meal was perfect. Forget about the brand. The, the brand for, so not the brand. Forget about the social media, the, the accounts that we have. Because you can find Dreamer Coffee on social media, be it Twitter, Facebook, website. The website has to be proper. Forget about that. That takes time. Don't rush it. Start slowly and then build it up slowly but surely. So Brima Cafe, we sell experience. Let's talk about Brima Logistics. That company, I saw a market in the niche. I said, I'm sorry, I saw a niche in the market. Yes, you've got typical courier companies who deliver things. But I said, how am I going to enter this market? Having spent some years in logistics, because of, if you look at my resume, I was my first job, I was a, I was a logistic clerk. My second job, I was a logistics supervisor. My third job, I was a logistics manager. My fourth job, I was a logistic head of logistics. My fifth job, my, where I am now employed, is chairman of a logistic company. When I was, a, I was a CEO, then I moved to become a chairman of Prima Logistics. So I've moved up, built up. But how did I start this? Yes, I started with, with a truck and a dream. A truck and a dream. The truck that I started business with, it's still with us, immaculate condition. It's since retired though. It's got a very corner space in one of our big warehouses here in Jet Park. You've been there, you saw the old lady. She's hot. <laughs> and out of the entire fleet that I have, that's the only truck where I have a say. The rest, they can, they can do whatever they want. But that truck, when they want it, they, they're gonna get a special note. So, what do we sell there? We sell promise. We've grown. We scaled up from just being me, the first employee, and the second employee was none other than that truck that retired. We now, I don't even know how many people we employ now. I've lost count. But how do you, how do you scale up from just one truck to employing 120 people? How do you? If you were to ask me, the answer is yes. 
And I feel, Bulelani, if you don't mind, my brother, I just want to touch on this book a little bit because that's why we're here. That's why we're saying to those entrepreneurs, I mean, NetBank is putting money into your business and say, there's 50,000. What are you going to do? You're going to buy Polo. Because that's what probably, you know, a typical business would do. We've listened to speakers talking about monthly financials, cash flows. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to start understanding those things. Ask. Reach out. Then let NetBank give you 50. NetBank can give you another 200,000. They are watching you what you want to do with that 50,000. They want to see. If you say 50,000, I'm going to buy cutting equipment, everything that I need for my business. Then you go to NetBank, you gave me 50,000. Hey, I put, I think I need a bucky and a trailer to run around David on. NetBank will give you that money. But you've got to show them what you did with the money. Don't go and buy research with business account. The biggest mistake that entrepreneurs make, ne? they can't separate themselves from the business bank account. A, bez, a business account, a business is a juristic person. It's got debts, liabilities, and other things. Whatever money is there, it's not yours. So my brother, that 50,000 is not yours. And never forget, it's not yours. It's not yours. It's a lot of money, 50K. For your type, it's a lot of money. But what you do with that money will determine how you move up forward. Okay? So he is a natural person. He works for the business. Because of, we tend not to be able to draw the difference between my money and the business money. I invest in 100,000. So Prima invest in 100,000. And I'm thinking, damn it, this is my money. I can just go and take 90,000 and sit with a couple of friends and drink. No, that's wrong. That's bullshit. Take that money and say, what am I going to do with this money? I need to go and buy raw material. I need to be able to make sure that there is salary for, for staff. You worry about those. Then you are an entrepreneur. And I want to touch a little bit about this book. Now, in this book, there's four chapters. And please, jot this in your mind or you can jot them down. I know you've got them in your book that you're going to get, but these are powerful stuff. And we're going to talk movies now, you and I. I want to touch a little bit about movies. The most important chapter there is the I. The I. The second chapter, the I as in the I, macho, amacho. The Matrix. You know the movie? Who's seen The Matrix, the movie? Who's seen The Matrix? I'm talking about The Matrix 1. Okay? Uh, it'll tell you how old you are if you've seen the movie. It's an old movie. And then the system is the third chapter. And the most important of all is the value and asset. We've had speakers here talking about the value and asset. Now, let's talk about the I. The I, very powerful concept in that book. Entrepreneurs have three eyes. There's one lying in here. It's very silent. If you look at the garden guy here, who was here, he's got the third eye. I just saw it. I saw this man, he's got the third eye. You drive into the, the township, there's only one thing that we are good at in the township. We chop trees. We don't plant trees. We don't worry about gardening. And I'm not saying all, but I'm saying majority of us. So this man said, don't chop trees. I will chop them for you in a very responsible way. Don't just chuck out grass in your... I will cut it for you. I'll make sure that I put plants. We go into the suburb. Oh, there's plenty of these garden services. It's for the first time in my life I see someone standing and says, I am so passionate. Because an entrepreneur has to be passionate about his offering. This man started this business, and I could clearly see it was not about money. When he was talking, I said, this man, it's not about money. This man started this business because he loved it. Money is a secondary thing that just comes up. If you start a business and say, I want to earn a living, there's nothing wrong with that. But I can tell you a secret. A lot of companies that set up to become legacy businesses, when I talk about legacy, they live beyond the founder. They started with passion. They didn't start because of survival. I'm not employed. I want to know. They started with 
passion, the eye. So it's an ability for you to see what others don't see. I mean, I grew up in this township. I used to live in Kobasotungamo. We used to buy here. Yeah. So whenever we, where we are now, where we are now, and listen to me clearly, where we are now, it was just nothing but a path. So someone saw an opportunity to say, I'm going to put a business. So what did they have? What is it that they have that made them to see? Their eye. They saw something that you don't see. So when you're an entrepreneur, you have a gift of doing something else that nobody, of seeing something else that no one sees. Now the question is, I have seen this now. What do I do? You create your own world. You create a, mov- a movie, you create a matrix. I call it the matrix, which is my second chapter. Now, let's talk about Neo. You've seen Neo again. Neo does the impossible things there. Neo goes through walls. Neo goes through walls. Our lives as, as, as people, we've been told what time to go to bed and what time to wake up, how you drive. You get to a robot. A robot says, stop, don't move. Have you stopped at the robot? And I'm not saying what they're doing is right. Have you stopped at the robot? And then you catch a taxi just coming in and passing. These guys are are, are, are refusing to to subscribe to the norm. Okay, they're wrong what they're doing. (laughs) They're wrong, yeah, but they're getting the end goal. So, how often you get told that you can't do this? I've been turned down by banks for not having a business plan. I've never had a business plan. I don't know what is a business plan. And I'll tell you what is my business plan. My business plan is my gut feeling. If I believe that I can do it. I mean, you saw those entrepreneurs were here. The garden men. Uh, there's a lot of them. They, they, they have God. There's, ask them. Oh, you know, I wanted to ask them if they've got a business plan. They don't have. But they've got what they call God. I believe I'm going to do this nonsense. I'm going to do it. This shit is mine. <laughs> so the movie Matrix... Neo does not confine to norm. He goes through wall. He he. Uh, what do you want to spin? What do you want to spin? He does. He does thirteen thirteen thirteen. Wow! And then hey, yaki it's you open. So, but you saw he does funny things in the movie. Ne? So that's the Matrix. So you must create your own illusion. And I'll tell you what's so fun about Matrix. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna just bring in a little bit of Bill Gates here. We all use Bill Gates product. So Bill Gates saw something that you could not see, my brother. And, and, and let, me maybe not, maybe, let me not use this Bill Gates. Because this lovely lady next to me, he's using an Apple. Who's the founder of Apple? Steve. So Steve Jobs saw something that you could not see. So he had the third eye. And then Steve Jobs went and created his own matrix, his own world. He created his own world, his own product. He's invited you to use his own product. But only him in his matrix like Theo can do what you can do. You know, he, he gets told, she gets told how to use this. Delete, send, that's all. But you know Steve Jobs can come and lock her out. You can lock Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs can come and say, you are not going to use my product. Okay, it's fine. I'm going to lock. I'm going to go in the mainframe. Uh, who's the founder of, 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 of Facebook? Mark. That man has more rights in Facebook than you and I. That man can turn... I, I've got about 5,000 followers on Facebook, and I'm thinking that I've achieved the pinnacle. You know that man can just fake in Facebook to have trillion followers. He can. You know why? Because he bloody owns it. It's his matrix. Now, Steve Jobs in creating his matrix, and I'm moving to, that, to my third chapter now. He needed to re- he realized that I need something to keep this matrix together. Remember, he saw something. He created this matrix. But matrix is kept by a number of systems. These systems are your accounting system. Because you can't have a business and not have an accounting system. You've got to have that sage or pastel or quick book or whatever. And Steve Jobs, in creating his matrix, he realizes that I've got to have systems. Prima Logistics has a couple of systems that it uses. 
Prima Logistics is using SAPE, and I've got what we call track and trace. Even Prima Cafe has a couple of systems that it uses. There's a, there's a point of sale where you come in and then they, they, do, a, they do a food there, it goes in the kitchen or it goes in the bar, and someone brings the food, and you wonder how the hell did this get to you? Or how was it cooked? No, someone said, no one, hey, I want the burger in the kitchen. No, no. As we hit, that, we hit enter here, we tap something, we hit enter, it appeared that side, they saw, they took, you've seen this. That's a system. So you've got to have a system that keeps your matrix. And remember, I'm not, I'm not saying companies. I'm saying I refer to a company as a matrix. You're thinking Apple is a, is a company. Apple is a matrix to Steve Jobs. So entrepreneurs, see your companies as matrix. See it as a world of illusion where you can do whatever you want, where the rules only apply to you. And where you have a great responsibility because you've got cash and you've got to spend it wisely. And you've got to be creative. So that's the third the system. Very important. Now remember, when you've seen, when you've created the matrix, when you've employed a number of systems to, to be used in your businesses, you now create something, which is an asset. When, when, and and, and let, 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 me, let me engage you on this one. We know um, uh, Jeff Bezos got, got divorced some years back. Ne? Okay. When he got divorced, I was only interested in one thing when the divorce was made mention. Yes, settlement. <laughs> no, just kidding, not settlement. Everybody was looking at settlement. Those with two eyes were looking at settlement. You are wrong, my brother, I was not. I was looking at one thing. Hmm? Hit me. I was looking at one thing. No. Uh, you are hot. I want someone hotter. I was looking at one thing when this man got divorced. This man is a trillion. He's rich. He's a, he's a, he's not, he was a billionaire then. I was looking at one thing. Hmm? Ownership of the company. Shit. What is he going to lose now? Damn it. No. Oh. Oh, he owns 90%. This wife is, he owns 100%. This wife is definitely taking 50%. You are interested in settlement. No. I wanted to see. He's controlling stake in the business. Because his business is now an asset. When you've got an asset, because you saw something, you created a matrix, you put system to run your matrix, you have an asset. And one thing that comes after an asset is the most important thing. That shows you, there's only one thing that comes. The value of your asset. Now we must get the matlevas. I can, I can, I'm not a, a CA. We must get the matlevas to say, come and evaluate my business. They've got funny Ibeda formulas that they use. They come and tell you, Seppo, you know your business is worth about uh, uh, 50 million. Huh? Fuck. You go and tell your wife, hey, lad, I just got a confirmation. We're worth 50 million. <laughs> there was a fucking divorce, 25 million cash. <laughs> you see? So you've created nothing but an asset that has a value. Now, when that has been achieved, guys, and I'm telling you, this is very important, and I'm talking to entrepreneurs that were here in front. Because I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Or not challenge me, I, wanna, I wanna just want to just shake you a little bit. One thing that comes when you've achieved or when you've followed the four chapters, the legacy. When you leave, how are you going to be remembered? This guy is gone. Uh, the founder, what's his name? Steve Jobs. But you are still using his product. He's left a legacy, so our our, his name will forever live in our memories. Forever live. You know, I was in Cape Town. I've got customers in Cape Town. I was there four days. I need five days in Cape Town, but I tried to squeeze everything in Cape Town for four days. So... There was one important visit that I had to make. Those who follow on Twitter, you'll see. I had to go to the South African Resource Heritage Agents. Just for one thing. You know what they have there? They got a library. I went there, my brother. And I walked in and I said, I'm Tepo here. I know you have a library. I want to donate the book. 
Why did I do that? Why the heritage council? Can someone tell me why? Why can I just give it to some library there in Benoni? Which is non-existent, by the way. <laughs> why the heritage council? And when I got there, I was interested in one thing. After they took my book, they cataloged it. They said, thank you very much. We take a photo. I tweeted. And then I left. Oh, but before I left, I said to them, I want to see the oldest book in here. I couldn't believe, guys. I was sat in the library. I ended up canceling my other meeting because I was so fascinated by old books in there, which are 1800, 1820. Chief, I just, I was like, I was like a child in the, can I, hey, look at that book. Hey, let me see, how old is this book? You smell the, beautiful. So I left my copy, and I know that when I'm 70, I'll, I won't find my book. I'll probably find it because I have a copy. But there will be that special, unique one, which is left at the Heritage Agency. So my book is there. You can go after 200 years. My book is there, and I did this for a purpose. So folks, I've given you a list of what you find in my book, but it's up to you. What worked for me doesn't necessarily will work for you. You can take that one and then mold it. Mold it to suit you. And, you know, I've, I've, I've forever and I'll always be passionate about entrepreneurship. And I'll forever be honored to be able to come to fun I, I don't even charge. I just say, even at work. I say, but you're charging to talk. I said, no. When Bulali calls, Bulalani calls, just call me. I don't care. You can, I'll fly myself to Cape Town. I'll pay for myself. I don't care. But as long as I'm going to talk to my fellow entrepreneurs, this is a gig for me. This is for me to inspire one, two, three, four, and then five, months, five years down the line, the garden guy, he's running five parkies in the township. But he must take his business far beyond that. He needs to start educating our people in the township not to bend the trees or cut them off. So never take a signal like so, I'll cut it for you. I'll stream it. Yes, please. The love must come there. His garden. I shall be landscaping. You know, I live in the suburb and in the estate. Whenever I come out, oh, neighbor shall be landscaping. But when I come into the township, I say, What's wrong with us? Oh, there's nothing wrong with us. Because we're not doing anything. 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 Because we're not doing I mean, when, 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 Tapelo, ne? Tapelo said, eh, Bashapa Roadhouse. And I said, and he said, in the township. I said, yes. In the township. Roadhouse in the township. But folks, please, there's a, a something that I picked up. And it says, and, and think of, and I want you to think about it. Because we don't think about that. But when, when you, could it, when you look at, at, at something, okay, I'm facing this camera. Ne? This camera has got four corners, kids, it's a four. But I can tell you, if I turn around at another angle, this camera is different. And I'll make a simple example. If I look at her in the eye, I can see she's got eyes, she's got a nose, beautiful nose. Robert. But if I turn here, she's different. She's got an ear, she's pink hair. Robert. So, when you get challenged every day and it's not working, all you need to do is just turn a little bit. Try and find another solution. As I said, I've had banks saying no. And they're still saying no. When they say no, I said, okay, cool. There's, only, there's that door, eh? there must be another door somewhere in NetBank. And I go to NetBank and it says, hey, give it to and uh, someone else will, will, will listen to my story and they'll listen to it because of not all. But remember, people in the bank, are, 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 are called, I call them tick box, but tick. They've been told, oh, no. uh, look at equity, negative man. Uh, uh, no, no, we can't give you money. But they don't dive deep. And I'm not talking down on NetBank. NetBank. <laughs> and, and they don't understand or why you got a negative equity or why those losses. It could have been for six months. Uh, the current guy in China and Robil, and I go to shop get depression I expect it, you know. So the person at the bank is not looking at that. 
He doesn't want to know that because he's been told what to tick. But you must go to the one that told this person to tick what? To say, can you please change? Don't tick. Oh, the reason why, can you explain that to you? I got all anti-explanation. Oh, about our tick affair. But I over-explanation. Actually, I over-explanation. But we must understand the explanation. And then, I get that. Okay, get that offer. I have a right thinking. Tapo was here. He wants money. No, no, no. But he's you quit up. No, no, no. I understand why he's going. Just, just give him the money. Huh? These things are created by human beings. Find the person that created this thing and talk to that person. And folks, I think I've, I've, I've tried to sum up and I know we, we pressed on time. And, 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 and this is a problem with, with someone like me. When, when you take me, when you've got two brands and, and, and I, there's a lot to cover. I mean, he, he just touched something about this book. And if you don't mind, can I share on the book a little bit? This book, I'm self-publishing. I wrote the book. And I said, okay, let's get your exclusive books on board. I was like so despondent. Khanti, the answer was looking at me. The answer was there. And I guess what? In your company, you must always employ the clever ones. Clever than you. Don't employ, don't want to be everything in your business. Take advice from your staff. So now, how, how I did? So we wrote the book. I wrote the book and we're sitting in the boardroom, spend, uh, you know, keeping up there. Okay, we're going to get ex- exclusive. I'm going to take everything. Chief. I'm going to be left with 20 rand. Karen, no, this is bullshit. Excuse my French. Karen, no, we've got to come up with a solution. Just an intern who was sitting there, my brother, looked at me and said, Sir, why are we having a problem selling the book? Karen, no, we're having a problem because we've got to get into exclusive books. We've got to get. But we have one thing that we. We own. Can someone tell me what is there? No. Huh? What, what can you tell me? Hit me, huh? Hit me. I'll give you another lunch if you hit this one. <laughs> what capability, my brother? I've been talking to you for almost an hour or two. You guys can figure it. I've got two companies. So if I'm going to sell a book, what is more unlikely to happen? That's Korea. Korea. So this guy said, sir, why are we worried? I said, what? Why are you worried about exclusive books? We're going to get this bloody book to every door. And I said, China, what are you? Huh? <laughs> okay, we've got another company called Brima Tech anyway. He said, no, sir. The MD of Brima Tech said, we can put up an e-commerce platform quickly, and then you guys will deliver the book. Oh, okay. Then why didn't I think of that? You see? So not all I see. But you start, when you start seeing, you start employing other people to help you see. So we came up with a product called e-black box. And we deliver in a black box. And there are a number of products on our platform. We sell hair products. So hair entrepreneurs, if maybe you want me to take your numbers, go on our plot platform and see e-black box. We own the platform. So my book now, if you want to buy it for someone else and have it delivered to the door there, you can just go there, have your credit card there or your check card. We'll make sure it goes to that individual. Not through Take A Lot, not through exclusive books, but through the platform that we own. So we get to keep what? All the kitchen, kitchen. Okay. So, yeah, folks, and, and, and that's it. And, and, and I can get into other ideas. I can talk about Brima Tech, but it'll take me the whole day. And I think Bulelani would like to engage me a little bit further, maybe. Uh, but I think I gave you a summation of who I am, what do I do, and to sum it, I am an entrepreneur. And thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I, I think I forgot something a little bit. That's why it is a lot. The guy that won here, uh, we. We've decided to help him with, you know, branding in any organization is very important. There were two companies that stood up there that just stole it for me. It was uh, Lebo M Jewelry, um, and then another one was, um, who was wearing his brand? Ahmed, there were two, it was Lebo M, there were two companies, they were wearing the, oh, Tosh, 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 Tosh. For me, it was those. If you come to me, you're wearing your brand, it talks to the level of intimacy. It talks to how much you are in love with your brand. You know, the other day we went to a funeral, and I must tell you this. 
and uh, and I wear I, I put on this. Uh, I got I got I got lots of this. So this is Brima. This is Brima Cafe, and I put one. I'm so used to be putting them, and I, I Monday to Friday, and it started slipping into Saturday and Sunday. So I put on. My wife said to me, "Now you can wear Brima," and I looked at my wife, Chief, with a level of disappointment. Then I went there. And guess what I put on? My Lacosta shirt. Same shirt, but difference is Brima. Then I went to her and I said, how do I look now? She said, yeah, now. <laughs> I said, love, you and I are going to get into a car. Who's paying that car? You said Brima. Who's paying for the fuel? Brima. The phone that you've got? Brima. My salary? Brima. Who the hell is Lacosta? Lacoste ain't paying shit. Lacoste wants money from me. And they're not gonna get a cent. And guess what? I took, I said, my wife said, I, I know you, you're gonna be unhappy at the funeral because I was a company. Okay, go and wear something that you are very comfortable with. And guess what? I went in there, the same shirt that she refused, I wore it and I was singing in the car, hallelujah, prima, hallelujah. Yeah. And we got to a funeral. <laughs> and guess what? Typical turkeys, Visachi da, Louis Vuitton da, and then nahe, so give an opportunity and we want to give us a bunny. There is no big marketing like in the body graveyard. How cheese? There's only one thing that comes up in the graveyard. What do you think you can? And I said, shit, I must do this. I must, I must just I must get a lot and give them for free go graveyard. What is that you need go graveyard? Umbrella. Umbrellas, my brother. They all went up. Zoo. I can pop by them. I'm going to talk about Because it's that marketing moment. It's free marketing. And guess what? I feel more happy than what I saw. So you put hundred umbrellas into one block. When they all leave, they live in hundreds. So you got your brand yeah. in every houses. Yeah. And another in, important concept: when I spoke to my staff, I said to them, "Do products that stay with people." There's only one thing that stays with people in your office. What is the most com common thing that you don't change on your desk? Sure. You don't think about it, but I'm going to tell you: <laughs> the eye. So those entrepreneurs, I'm telling you, huh? if you're going to market, market it this way. What is the most common thing? That your computer, your desk. There's something that doesn't move, that doesn't change. Mouse pad. That shit doesn't move. It's there. And uh, guess what? They're always clicking, 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 clicking. When they click, 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 go mouse pad. They're clicking on your name. Your shirt, where is it going to sit? They'll do it. It's, it's, quite, it, it, it's an engaging process. You're going to have to walk the, the walk to be able to get it through. So, the 50... Yeah. So, and you need advice. We, I'm there. I'll give you my number. You, I'll take yours. We're gonna, I'm going to spend some time with you.
And I'd like to see you, son, only formally kitted, only brand obsessed like in Nakuru. You must wear your brand. If you're a shirt in Lacosta, remove the Lacosta and put your brand there. <laughs> ne? Because you bought it, they can't say anything to you. All right, folks, I'm going to end it up here. Ne? social entrepreneur. glad you answered the question when I ask you this when a successful entrepreneur <laughs> um, and, I like that question like is failing sh like should I embrace failure and rejection like through that journey of becoming a successful entrepreneur you know I uh, one of my tweets uh, if you follow me on Twitter at Tepo Mekwa you realize that when I for the last 17 years being with Prima, Prima Logistics I must have resigned, I think, over a million times. I got, I resigned and I had myself again. So those were failures. There's times where you get so tested, my brother, so tested you feel, oh, this is it. Where you have no money to even pay salaries. Don't be fooled by what you see. I can tell you I've had those moments and I'm still having them. So in a nutshell, I sum it. An entrepreneur. It's never been, it's not a person that is so happy. Monday to Sunday, 
you are in this business, you love it. Because I've just said to you right now, become intimate with your business. But the moment you become intimate with that business, and excuse my French, you're going to get fucked like me. <laughs> you're going to be so messed up that you, you, you're either going to be, you're going to strive to be great. Because remember, you, you can't be best in what you do. And you can't be good. You're going to be great. Mm. And you being great, you're going to be so bothered. Because you'll want money to do great things, but you're not going to have money. And, and, and you're going to be frustrated. Trust me, you see me walking through, you see me from here walking into my car. And you must know, that man is not a happy man. But I chose this man. And I love it. Because you know why? It, it puts, and I'm, I'm trying to answer your question. It puts bread on the table for not just my family, but for many other families. As Brian said, for every employee I pay, there's three more people who feed, who are fed from that. Today I had to wake up and authorize salaries. And that's it. And I'll tell you one thing, and I'm, not, I'm being honest. The saddest day of my life is <laughs> I'm happy for 29 days, my brother. Eh? But when it comes to paying salaries, I just don't like it. I'm a typical entrepreneur. So you are going to fail. But when you fail, I've just made an example of what the lovely lady out there. I said to her, if you fail, and like, if I am sharing, and all you do, Baba, you just change, you come by ears, you whip, you whisper, you say, in your <laughs> and so, yeah, so you are going to fail. All right, you are going to fail. Um, hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter Lamola. Um, before I get to uh, ask question, uh, uh, this is a request, Wulela. Uh, um, can you please approach uh, the Department of Small Business? Um, why? Because uh, I heard that this are the the police. You can. I don't want to go deep into politics. There, they are useless, right? So for us to teach them about the real entrepreneurs, let's go to a small department or a small business department and say, have a seat here and listen to these entrepreneurs because we are crying. And uh, as time goes on in business that I've learned business, I've uh, learned that uh, Robert Kiyosaki says, um, you make money with business to protect it with the real estate. But in South Africa, what I've realized is uh, you make money with business, you protect it politically. Um, my question uh, to Mr. Tepo uh, is that um, don't you think uh, small uh, entrepreneurs should know, they don't have to be interested, they should know a little bit of politics because as time goes on, because as, as your business goes bigger, they come and they come in like, Baguettes, you know, they, they they come fully in. So now you're vulnerable, you don't know. <coughs> uh, Guys, let me just get you, let's just give him attention. That's a good question that he's just asking. You don't, you don't know anything political, then they start uh, using you. You are just uh, a tennis ball to them. Don't you think entrepreneurs need to dive in little, even if 5%? <coughs> into politics and not just ignore it because we know that uh, politics in South Africa it has a bad name and I draw inspiration from USA look at what uh, USA has done they protect their inter yeah, entrepreneurs they protect them so that was my question thank you so much Yo. uh, this gentleman I, I could tell is a, is a, is a political entrepreneur I guess we've got social entrepreneur model. Right? A political entrepreneur. <laughs> Powerful. You can separate the two. Business and uh, an entrepreneur. Oh, business and, and politics you can't. Entrepreneurs influences uh, business. But politics. But in South Africa we've seen to a larger point. I I I'm 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 not I'm not a recipient of I mean if you look at my business logistics and I'm not talking about cafe because cafe you are the customers, you are the patrons. That's how it. When I look at logistics, and it's so sad, my brother, it's so sad, and I hear what you say. Today, 20, 28, 28 or 30 years, I'm sitting here as a 17 year old, the only black owned logistic company in the country with this muscle. That turnover a day is only 2%. And it's not like I don't tender, I do. But they ended up giving our very own 
a very difficult one. Our very own gives it to by and it's a sore, sore issue for me. It's sad. Or you'd see DSV it delivered the, the driver's license. And you ask yourself, why not Prima? You know? Um, Americans are doing it so well. They, they protect their ass. I mean, love Donald Trump, hate him. He says, make America great, buy America. DSV is a Danish company. So if our government spends millions to deliver your driver's license, your money is leaving this country in the form of dividends. So, but when that happens, we, we, we can't just cry. If there's no road, the government does not build a road, what do we do? We build ourselves. Without diving into politics, I have seen companies putting up fire departments now. I have seen people doing poli- uh, private prosecution. I have seen people doing private pothole fixing. I have seen p- a private p- uh, school coming. I have seen everything going private. I'm not here to talk politics. I'm here to talk entrepreneurship. But let me tell you something. When they fail, find a way around. Remember what I said? If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. The way I've looked at this lovely lady in front of me is different to the other way that I've looked at her. Change, my brother. Yes, but not necessarily we should not continue to engage. With the learning, we should engage. But at times we hit a wall. It's not like he doesn't. It's not like he has not tried. I have, and I can tell you he's tried. So what does he do? He goes to the private sector. The likes of NetBank have an appetite for you. And they say, come. And what I like about the NetBanks, they put money into it. They say, yes, there's 50,000. Guys, now in my time when I started this business, NetBanks are not giving us money. They wanted money from us, but they are giving money. Take these opportunities. Grab them. And you've got advices. People are telling you how to go about doing it. Not necessarily you have to do it that way, but take and learn. Grab it and run. Don't look at this government. Don't look at it. Sarah is messed up. It's on strike. Okay, guys, I don't want to get into that. But just do your, your, your own thing. Your own thing, my brother. Thank you. Um, so I think my question is a bit answered from what you just said now, but I just wanted to find out as an entrepreneur, um, looking at what's happening in South Africa with the recent lootings, and um, I'm speaking for myself, um, that you, we are scared to go into townships and um, building our brands there or having, you know, as you mentioned, that you have uh, the cafe in a township instead of you driving to, you know, Wobon to in a Bedford or so forth. How do you bring back that trust for, okay, guys, this is for us. Let's not burn it. Because a lot of people that have the businesses closed down and now they're even scared to open. So how do you bring that back? Is it changing the direction? How do you start with it? this is also benefiting you because I think that's one thing that you look at a lot of um, your Starbucks or whatever that are you drive to Eastgate especially in the East Red a lot of these restaurants fancy restaurants you need to go to Eastgate for you to experience that but when you bring it here you get scared of it. anything happens when people are mad they might even burn DKNY but it's bringing money for the three families and so forth yeah. Okay, let me take this one first, and then I'll try and sum it up. Um, never, 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 never run away. It's the same conversation that I had fellow entrepreneurs who've made it, uh, who are now in operating in suburbs. And I'm saying, guys, let's get back. Let's invest in the township. If you don't invest in the township, as what that is, you're going to see, and I'm not being racist, you're going to see this Indian mulling them inside their township. I mean, if I could give you the bit of history of who the biggest turnovers are South and Chelten are in the township. It's not even black businesses. And just by driving through the mall, on your right hand side, there's that shopping complex come on. It's not owned by a black local guy, I can tell you that. The shops tell them all like ten out of ten. Kids are the other the other races. So it's because of we are deterred, that's all. And don't get me wrong, I've had my share of experience that crime in that restaurant. And the DKNY has had their share in the board. But we don't have to stop. Because you've got other elements of that. We have to engage with them to say, my brother, don't blend black. Do you know my friends? They hijack by the very same black brothers that I have. 
I want to bring my favorite duck. Why not? Why not? If it was a typical duck, he's and he's 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 very patronage and 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 and, and he lives a spirit uh, Indian to Indian. You know Indians go and put a shop go an Indian here. They'll never buy from you. But put a shop go go location in. Eh? You will pass pizza at Hepo or the Gadibonis here. You will do it. So it starts with us. It's it's called self funding. And 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 DK and Wise, I mean they, they, they go to a point of analyzing how many black people are there that they support, which is good. Because you gotta know. You gotta know. So please don't give up. And and, and let's conscientize our people and, and through your political parties like EFF, ANC and others to start saying black men stop banning each other. When I I came out of oh, uh, God June uh, and I, I got a shot, he, he, he touched he touched on banning God uh, root, uh, looting, and I could, I could identify he must have lost. I lost, I lost, and I was coming out of ICU because of the COVID. I just had a ventilator. I was in ICU for three weeks. Now I'm starting to see now, and then he be telling us I could, and I know that root at Devon. My trucks run between Devon and because I pull containers out of the port. Into into Jobe, but I'm trying to get and so forth. And Ness, Ness, I'm trying to recover. Let's find out my trucks between Devon and and I get an answer. They tried to call my wife, and my wife said, "No, no, no, motor trucks are safe. The Pakile, we're just losing chalet because we're not running." It was a okay relief, but I, I, I lost money. I mean, I lost substance. We lost ten over an was about on that month. It was about. 35 lesser than it would have been. Of course, we bend. We bend. We bend. So don't give up. Invest in this township. Let's engage our black brothers and black sisters. Let's change the mindset. Through dialogue, we care. I mean, he had a choice. He brought this in the township. He went out and he got sponsors. So when there are such events, spread where to go to Tia. It's not about you'll get 50,000 from that bank, but you'll get important discussions that you are not going to have. You're not going to have. So we went into a place, Eric Isang, Biala, and we 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 we're talking about uh, a business. Let's go into those Chesanyamas. Let's go into your Prima cafes in the township. Let's talk to our people because of you remember Barack Obama. I, mean, I have to touch on this. Barack Obama took over as a president in 2009, 2008, and there was one common. Well, there was one thing happening in 2008, and those who would remember, uh, what was happening in 2008? Recession. It was the biggest recession and everybody was, job companies were closing down. Obama said something very powerful. It's like, it's like Obama was set to fail. He said, well, no, I'm not going to put my money into Ford. I'm not going to put my money into uh, these big companies, where Ernest and Young and so forth. I'm going to put my money into an entrepreneur. And that's what he did. He put his money into those entrepreneurs. And Americans, when it comes to entrepreneurship, they are so into it. And immediately, remember with, 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 with Ford, when they have to employ four people, they've got bloody requisitions to complete. But an entrepreneur decides now, when he wakes up, I, I think I'm going to hire one now. Everybody, how can you have a Twitter or a Facebook advertising? Never about to know. It happens just like this, quick. So, if I'm this government, I'll put money, a lot of money, into this entrepreneur. Please, let's not give up. Let, they want us to give up. Let's not give up. Let's soldier on. Thank you. No, just speak. No, no. It, it goes. It's going in here. All right. Uh, thank you, firstly, for the opportunity. I am also the most organized man, owner and founder of most. Uh, I would like to thank NetBank, Gulelan, and the team because um, I was born here at Davidson. We've never had such a session. We've never had such an eye, eye opener in terms of entrepreneurs. Uh, since Fundele, we started from scratch and learning entrepreneurship. So for you guys to bring such an initiative, I think it helps our township. township. It helps us actually grow our businesses and learn through business. I've known Umbizi Khotman, Khotman Tsepo. I've never had an interaction with him. And I've, I've been meaning to, to meet him so that he can also coach us in terms of business. And you guys brought him here. So when I saw the opportunity, I said, there's no way I'm going to miss it. And we are learning a lot from it. I hope it won't stop because I'm, I'm seven to ten years into business. I've never had such a lecture from him. So um, and um, the question that I have for him is that how, because I see him, I follow him, how do, 
does he manage to actually juggle a, a business and family? Because now I have a few businesses of my own and it takes a lot of my time. And sometimes you're not, not able to actually to go back and balance the two. How do you go about, how do you navigate yourself and how do you keep your energy um, going through and through, especially when you have to actually pay those salaries? What, what motivates and, keep, and keeps you going? Thanks. Balance. It's difficult to balance between family and business. And I'll ask this question, ne? and I'll answer it, or we'll answer it, you and I. I'm going to ask you, lovely lady, what comes first? Okay, when you look at me, what do you think comes first between the businesses that I have and family? And be honest. No, there's no bit of bone. There's no 50-50. <laughs> business. My family is secondary to business. So if you're an entrepreneur, you're sitting here and you're saying it's a family. Oh, you've got a problem. <laughs> and I'll tell you equally so. Ne? What comes, my wife is, is, a, is a technocrat. She works for government. So you can understand. She doesn't like what I'm saying now. So when I talk a bit about God, I said, please don't go there. <laughs> so, so, and I inspire her to be a career woman she is. So she, she does what she wants. She, she, does, she, she works for the president. She can be told now you're flying to Cape Town now. She doesn't have to report to me. She just said, hey, listen, I'm flying to Cape Town now. You look after the kid. Bye-bye. Gone. I decided to take my day today to come and talk to you. And she... We're supposed to go shopping, the two of us. She went. And she shopped. And I'm here with you, my fellow colleagues. Now, let me answer that question. Business comes first. And I'll tell you why I say business comes first. You wake, I wake up every morning. Ne? I wake up half past four, by the way. Ne? Well, sometimes five. I would only see my kids for an hour, 30 minutes, two hours. And then I would leave, I'll be at work at 7 o'clock in the morning, the logistic business. I'll leave the logistic business, cut three, I'm at the cafe, up until six, half past six. I get home. Ne? I am there for only an hour, 30 minutes, two hours, I sleep. So when you look at it, I saw my kids for only four hours. But I spend time with my businesses for anything not less than 11 hours. And then... You want to say it's family. If it's family, flip it. Go and spend eight hours with your family and spend two hours with business. It's not going to work when you're an entrepreneur. Whether you like it or not, I'm not going to lie to you. So start psyching yourself. This, this question, I've engaged my staff quite a lot. And especially when, oh, by the way, he's my competitor in the township. <laughs> yeah, he's my competitor. I've, I've, I've seen his work. He thinks I don't follow him. I do. I've seen, I know Moss, and I, trust me, I, I've seen your fish. So, psych yourself, let your partner understand about the journey that you go, you're about to embark. If you've got a partner that always wants you here and wants you to walk in the mall with her holding hand, then you've got the wrong partner. <laughs> ne? Now my partner understands. Or, hey, tagole, now we'll, mm. I mean, I was in Cape Town. I only came back last night. No, this morning. No, Maban uh, see. The flight that I took uh, was a bit of a problem, and we had to wait and be put in another flight. But I got home safe. If it's like I want to go to, so I had to wait for another flight for three hours to Cape Town. So meaning, I must have been going airport for something like five, six hours. Game is trying to get home. If business is important, if family is important, then I should not have been in Cape Town. I should have been at home waiting for the kids or give a lot or something like that. And I'm not saying they are less important, but I'll tell you why. When Kitchen Kitchen comes. They smile. <laughs> you know? So, and, and, and I've had a privilege of taking my kids to New York and Boston, and I would, I would take them, you know? And I would take them, go, go to New York and say, you see this in the movie, you saw this in, the, in that movie, yes. You see, this is not impossible. This is possible. You can set foot here. And I'll answer that. Good, I want to answer it again. This is possible. And then you take them, go to Boston. You show them in the, 
uh, MIT universities, the, you know those universities that were Boston and Zangatoro, you see, you can study here. And then you take them to uh, Washington, you show them, you can be anything. Ne? Then I call them and I says, guys, I love you so much that I have to sacrifice my time so that I can be able to show you these things. Because if I'm going to spend too much time at home, it's, I've answered your question, and especially when your business is retail. I am so challenged. I'm like you, because I run a business at Kualanga 12 o'clock Friday, Saturday. And sometimes I would work from 7 o'clock, it's like at 12. And I live in Pretoria, by the way. So, yes, not Kasi. I live in Pretoria. So I drive from Brima Cafe every day, same route. My wife said, hey, when I look, drive up to 1 o'clock. But she understands. It's got to be done. I hope I answered your question. Your business must come first, my brother. Should, not must. I'm Nobukle Moyo from a company called Optima Skike, which means Optimum Women. Uh, so we work on the mental health of women primarily, but of everyone, Jane, basic. So I just want to ask, actually this question is for everyone, but you know, I just want to know how do you balance your, I'm going to get a bit personal, your mental health when it comes to running a business, dealing with the failures, dealing with the successes, the challenges that are involved from every level, from the starting point to the to wherever you are. How do you deal with it so that you don't get to a point where you are depressed and you don't want to continue? How do you, because you are helping someone actually, me even, so. <laughs> I, I, I always say, uh, uh, entrepreneurs are, I mean, we start talking about the third eye, I agree with you, you know, no one has a third eye, but you and I have. You are a little bit crazy. So, <laughs> there's no way you're going to be sane. You are insane. You know, uh, Elon Musk with his Tesla, he's, he's sick. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong being a little bit crazy. And what she's saying, she's, how do you mental? How do you not collapse into... I know a lot of entrepreneurs who've collapsed into that mental state where they, they felt so depressed. And, and when I say I know a lot, me included as well. So I've been there. And in my book, ne, there's, a, there's a chapter, not a chapter, there's a page where it talks about how depressed I was when COVID hit us. Um, and in that book, um, it tells you I locked myself in the room. Remember, I've worked so hard. I've given everything. I've sacrificed my family. And this bloody pandemic comes and now threatening to destroy everything that I have. So I end up in the room, secondly depressed. And I was like down and out. And then my wife knocked on the door. And it's in that book. You'll read it. And I, I hope I, I'm answering a question by, by saying that. My wife came and said, listen, please, your staff members are at work. They need a captain. And, and stop feeling so regret. Ah, I'm the pandemic so don't look at me and think, or I've always been fireproof. or all, No, 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 no. I had those moments, and I have them every day. So then I, they just call me. They're busy setting up a war room. War room, we're fighting how to keep this business surviving now. And I was like, okay. Then I got, but I was, okay, I'm here. And I, as I said, I live in Pretoria. So I joined the freeway R21 on my PS site. I've never... <laughs> well, occasionally, maybe there was no pandemic. That's my location. That was not virus, you know. Marona Daniela So when I joined the R21, uh, from Nelma Pierce up until I could take the jetpack off ramp, I was the only car. I got even depressed further. I called the car. Love you. There's people are dead. But what should we do? Abasaliyo. I don't know about what thing. Just drive to work. Your staff are waiting for you. So I got to work and I got off my car and, and, and staff like just the executive committee was there, the executive staff. They called me in and I saw the financial manager was heading the meeting. As I, there's a chair, you know, the executive chair. As I walked through, they stood up. They said, sir, this is your chair. And I said, no, you sit on that chair. And I sat on the other side. And I said, okay, what is the plan? I said, okay, there's Terza. We can get some money there. Standard Bank, 
NetBank, Nana, they've all put up that COVID fund loan. We can get that money there. There's that Tugu Tugu funny. We've got the forms. Compliance, guys, in any business helps. Don't take SARS for granted because they can close your business. They'll make your Skakra tax clearance and be able to tender. And you not just need a tax clearance for government. You also need it for private sector. So they put it up together and guess what? Within a month or so, we got the funding and the business was, was now getting out of its, its channel. Not necessarily getting out, but finding its feet a little bit. So, yes, I get mentally challenged where sometimes I don't know whether I'm coming. Depression. If you are an entrepreneur and you've never been depressed, then you don't know what it's like building a business or starting up a business. So you are going to get depressed. You are abnormal, but you must always be, remember, ne? there's something wrong with you. You chose to be here to listen to this conversation. Other people, as I speak, yeah. but you chose this day. So by choosing this day, already says much about you. But it's fine. <laughs> it's uh, I, I, I think I'm going to leave it there. I know we're all tired now. But I hope it was worth it. Bulilani, who's the program director? Now I'm left on stage alone. Oh, there's the program director. Yeah, but, but, but other than that, uh, I want to leave you with something. And this is very powerful. Ne? And please jot this down. Ne? Jot this down. This is very important. And you might have seen it somewhere before. Ne? Bari and interpret. You'll see how sick these people are. How sick we are. These people, ne? they jump off the cliff. And on their way down, they build a plane. That's how sick we are. So remember, keep this thing in your mind. You are going to jump off the cliff. And on your way down, you're going to build a plane. It's crazy, yeah? It's super crazy. So jump on the cliff. Those are entrepreneurs. If people are, if we go to the test book, but I was like, oh, entrepreneurship, risking, and risking, oh, no, no, forget that. No, no, no. Runa, we are the crazy one. They must put crazy there. They must put the eye there. They must put us jumping into the cliff and building a plane on our way down. That's who we are. That's who we are. And, there's a, and you guys need to research. There's a difference between a businessman and an entrepreneur. Who knows what the difference between the two? There's a huge difference. Who can try? Hit me. Yeah, correct. Yeah, but I'll give close. But I'll give you a, a very simple, basic difference between the two. Runa, the entrepreneurs, we hire the businessmen. Yeah, we hire them. We hire the businessmen. We hire the Harvard boys and girls. We hire what well, keeps. Well, keeps. I look at them. Buy what keeps. Also, I can MBA. It's fine. Go there. This is the guy that's going to put the formula to determine how my business is worth. Simple. It's okay. So that's the difference between the two. Remember, entrepreneur hires a businessman. That's all, period. Okay, thank you, folks. Um, you know, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much for your insights. And just a reminder, so he's going to be stationed right here. We're going to set up a table. He's going to sign the book. You get the book. His hands are going to work. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you. I'll hand over. Oh, the kid. Woo. So, so these are some of the products we got from the guys outside. So over and above the Prima brand, you'll now wear more local stuff. Uh, and, 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 and we'd like to get hold of this guy so that we can warehouse these things and distribute them. Done. Dan. Yeah. Yeah, Dan, thank you so much. Uh, please, oh, yeah. Single picture. That's it. Thank you.
What a day. Oh, what a day. So we've come to the end of our program. Um, we were supposed to end earlier on. But you know, hey, when you love what you do, you know, and what we love is that you've stayed. I mean, I mean, you could have gone, like, but you decided to stay and want to say to you thank you so much thank you to each and every single one of you for coming out today uh, spending your time which you'll never get back but it's an investment that you've made in yourself and we do hope we've always said this my last parting shots that the platform is for you we want to come back next time next year like David Ton, and we want you to be on the stage we want you to share your story we want you to inspire other entrepreneurs because it's when someone that you know is doing it and they're doing it big and you can see them and they were once here. So this platform is for you to utilize. Thank you once again. Give yourselves a round of applause. <clears throat> we want to say a big thank you as well to our partners who have made today possible. Big, big thank you to NetBank for believing in our vision, the support that you're giving to entrepreneurs. We truly, truly appreciate it. Can we give NetBank a massive round of applause? <laughs> There's another word of uh, thanks that has to go out. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Temba Kumalo, uh, the branch manager of NetBank here in Davidson. I think the, p the person that you will be seeing in most of the times than anyone that you have seen today. Why I'm saying that is that I'm posting a challenge to you, every one of you. After everything has been done here, right? What's happening? What's going to happen? You go back to your space, right? Um, you try to push your own business, right? But you need a support, right? So as NetBank, we're taking that initiative to say, invite us to your own business. This exhibi exhibition that is happening here, please continue doing it in your own spaces. You guys, you know each other now. I'm sure you'll be calling each other to say, let's do our business. Let's go out and exhibit somewhere else. When you're doing all those exhibitions, call us, right? Uh, I like Mr. Tepo. He spoke about time. He's selling time. He's selling experience, right? And he also spoke about social media a lot of times. And we're using those social media in a very wrong way at times, right? This time that you'll be spending uh, calling us maybe to come and support you and take those photos and post it in that social media, that's where you're going to get people noticing you, right? To say a reputable business like NetBank will go to your space, that smaller space where you operate, and support you. It means there's something about you, right? But if you are just doing it on yourself, people will say, oh, who is this? I, we don't know these people. But once they see reputable businesses coming to your own space and support you, they start recognizing you. And I'm, I, I, I'm posting that uh, challenge to you guys to say, I'm here in DevTeam. Uh, I'm sure, uh, Pratepa, you will remember, we once came to Shikundu, yes, Shikundu, and we painted that street. And I like the caption that you used at that time. You said, we have created our own Villagazi street. I think it's some few, few years back. We wanted to create our own villa at the street. Then yeah. The problem is that everyone is not jumping into the opportunity as always. But if they don't, then we'll do our own villa. Exactly. So I was there. I, I was supporting the smaller business that was there at that time. Mm. And uh, we said, guys, we are here for you. Right? And if you don't invite us, soon we'll forget about you. So that's the challenge that I'm posing to you guys, and that's all for me. You can come to at any time my office is open um, to speak to me. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
Thank you so much, sir. Um, just last two announcements. It's our first time here in Davidson. Must we come back? Yes! Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to come back. Uh, do you, must we come back? Yes! So, <laughs> in the 50,000, yo. So, in, in order for us to come back, we need you guys to come back. We need you guys to please share your experience because in order to go bigger and better, we need more and more partners on board. So, what we're asking from you is to say, go onto our social media pages and just share your experience from today. We also want to grow. We want to get better. Share your recommendations. What you'd like us to do next time. How we should do it next time. But we need you to share your experiences. If you thought today was amazing, please share. Two hashtags. The first one is? The other one is? The first one is? The second one is? Please use those hashtags when you are sharing your experience so that next time we come back. And not just once, but it's something that we do every single month. We need you. So let's work together. Last announcement. Please continue to visit the exhibition stands. They're still here. And then we're going to have lunch. And smile. Not quite. So we're going to have lunch. What I need you to do is they're going to bring the lunch to the tables. Please do not move from your table before you get your lunch so that we can make it order. order, ne? Mr. Tepo is still here for the books. Don't worry, we've got enough books for each and every single one of you. He's still here. He's still going to sign those books for you. So please have a seat. Social media, hashtag join us for tea. And then to our online audience, 13th of August, we're in Katle Home. You can come and you can join us. Once again, a big thank you. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Hashtag join us for tea. Thank you, Siabo. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Sorry. Oh. S sorry, whoa, well, just one last announcement. Oh. Namik Belabang Bong. I'm like, 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 I'm like,